Good afternoon. It's April 4th, 2024. We are going to go to Idaho today for a hearing in the Brian Koberger case. Before we get to Idaho for the hearing in the Brian Koberger case, which starts in about 20 minutes from now, we're going to do a quick road so far. And there's a few more filings that have come in since the last time I streamed on this. So we have a lot to cover before court goes live. And court will be going live at uh, 3.30 Central Time, 1.30 Local Pacific Standard Time to court. But there, again, are more filings regarding these hearings. There are two issues at hearing, and we are going to just cover Idaho today and this court hearing because um, I am dying to see what Judge Judge has to say about all of this. So we're going to we're gonna roll the intro uh, a little earlier than usual. We are going to give a quick road so far. We're going to cover the new exhibits or the new filings from the prosecution. And then hopefully court will be starting. No idea how long this hearing will be today. They normally run at least an hour, um, but we're going to do it contemporaneous with the hearing. But we've got a recording system set up so that when the court ends the stream and they always make the videos private immediately when court ends, that we will not get hit by that if we pause to talk during court. So We've got a lot to chat about. Lawnards, it's so good to see you. Um, I have so many questions about how this went down today. So, so we need we need to talk about it. We need to do a road so far. We need to do the new, new, new filings. Lawnards, are you ready? Live court is our favorite. Let's get into it. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. For a quick road so far with the University of Idaho murders and the prosecution of Brian Koberger, we are getting ready for a court hearing today regarding two motions. The prosecution made a motion to, quote, rescind, not rescind, that was the second one, made an, uh, an order prohibiting contact with prospective jurors absent leave of the court, and then the defense made a motion to rescind a court order for failure to provide due process. So there are two things on the docket today that are interconnected. The prosecution made a uh, motion for an order prohibiting contact with prospective jurors because they say that the defense was surveying jurors or potential jurors in Lataw County where this court sits. They were doing that via telephonic survey through a survey company with the use of an expert who was helping craft that survey. The defense says, yes, of course we were doing this. This is perfectly allowed. I don't know why everyone has a problem with this because this is how we are going to find the evidence to support the motion for change of venue. Generally, motions for change of venue happen while jury selection or at least the process of gathering a veneer is underway. When that happens, the court sends out the juror survey from the court. And those surveys are made in connection with both the prosecution and the defense. And they ask open-ended questions. So it seems that the court and the prosecution from both the defense motion and the prosecution's motion, that they were not aware that this is the process the defense was going to take. Now, can the defense do this in Idaho without permission of the court? We'll see what Judge Judge has to say. The prosecution and defense in all of their motions have been silent as to whether or not this is proper process without court permission. And the prosecution is arguing that it violates the non-dissemination order. The prosecution is not saying that it violates any other court rule or law in Idaho. They've said very specifically 
that it violates the non-dissemination order, which indicates to me that perhaps without the non-dissemination order, this is something that could be done by the defense without leave for permission from the court. Because if that wasn't the case, you would expect the prosecution to say, this also violates rule of court, whatever, local rule, whatever. And we haven't seen that in any of the filings. But there's also been no discussion about the survey process, and that is very interesting to see. So we will see what Judge Judge decides to do. But what we know is that the prosecution filed their motion for order prohibiting contact. The same day, the defense said, stop, collaborate, and listen. We object to the prosecution's issue, and we will be filing more information down the road. After that happened, the court said, uh, no, you stop right there. Thank you very much. No one's going to be talking to jurors until we have a hearing on this. The defense then made a motion saying, um, excuse me, no, stop in the name of love. You're at least in the name of due process. What you can't do is issue an order without hearing from the defendant. And you didn't hear from the defendant yet. So you can't make the order stopping us from doing surveys without hearing from the defendant. The prosecution said, well, we're going to set a hearing. So if we're going to set a hearing, the defendant will be heard from. So this is fine. The defense objected to both of the process. Well, the defense made the motion to rescind. The prosecution objected. The prosecution made the motion not to contact prospective jurors. The defense objected. We now have the reply from the state on those. What we didn't have um, the last time I streamed on this on Tuesday. I don't think we have a due process issue here. The delay has been very minimal. The um, state has argued that the defense has an opportunity to be heard. And the remedy for that is really allowing the defense a little more time to file their motion for change of venue. That's the remedy here. Okay, you've been heard. We paused you for like a week. Um, it's not going to significantly delay you. We don't even have a trial date. We already know the trial date's going to be sometime in the late spring, summer, late summer of 2025. So with all of that, we're going to cover right now the motions or the responses from the prosecution. And then we're going to go to court and see what Judge Judge has to say about this. Does it violate the order? Should the defense have gone to the court and said, we are doing this and it is proper for us to do this, but just so you know, or is it perfectly fine for the defense to, you know, ask for forgiveness, not permission, and go ahead and do what they are doing? What we do know is a number of jurors who were contacted for this survey reached out to the prosecution and were like, excuse me, what? We also have law nerds that work in this field who left incredibly insightful and helpful comments on the video. One saying, hey, I actually work uh, similarly doing survey research as a PhD. And one of the issues with this type of survey versus like open-ended questions is that those are those that are inclined to answer are likely to be those that already know about the case because others are going to be like, I don't want to talk to you. I don't, I don't know. So it could skew potentially the results of a survey because the ones who are selecting to answer are ones who already know about a case, which shows maybe a skewed result of how many people are really aware of this case and any bias they may have. And I thought it was tremendously insightful and helpful. So if you look through the comment section, you will again be blown away by what a tremendous group of accomplished, intelligent, and hydrated humans you are as law nerds and how much I learn always from having a conversation with you. And thank you so much for sharing your insights on all of these cases from those that work in related fields to those that live in these communities, it's absolutely uh, incredible. And I, I just appreciate you guys so much. This community is incredible. Y'all are impressive. And, and truly, you, uh, you maintain good boundaries. And for those of you that are still working on it, you're, you're trying and you're hydrated and I adore you. So let us um, get into 
the motions from the prosecution and then get into court when court starts. Yes? Yes? We good? All right. Let's do that. Emily, have you shared your screen yet? No. No, I haven't. Replay crew, by the way, love you the most. Um, as I'm pulling this up, because we're professionals here and obviously super, super uh, duper prepared, um, always, I mean, I have makeup on, I feel, I feel like we're, we're doing great, but you guys have, have, have absolutely, um, showed up and showed out for the podcast yesterday. So, uh, thank you for that. You guys really, really wanted to talk about what did he didn't do or what did he did or is did he done or, um, or, or the rest of it. Not only are you witty in the, um, in the comment section of the podcast, you also ask incredible questions. And I really appreciate, um, always the questions because I'm like, Oh, I could explain that better. I forgot to explain that there. Uh, just absolutely appreciate it because I, it always informs the way that I can explain things to make it more complete or more accurate. And you guys are like, we want to talk about this literally forever. So um, th thank you for that. And for those of you that have found me through that podcast, thank you for that. That's what we do here. The podcast, really, the goal of the podcast is always to break things down in a more, I can't really say succinct, because <laughs> they're like an hour at least, but in a, a more succinct and um, and precise deep dive kind of a way where the the live streams we often will tangent will pull up documents in real time and we will have more of a conversation about it so i see the two as different but i always hope that the podcast is like i get it now like the takeaway from the podcast is like okay i understand what's happening good i have questions but i understand what's happening and that's really the uh the point and then the quick bits channel for those of you that don't know we have a quick bits channel the quick bits channel leans into not only like my clip down summaries of what's going on in a case in case you missed a live stream and don't want to feel like where are we in the uh where are we in season five of the Koberger case so those summaries are the last time in the Koberger case on stream they really are the um, the summary of what's happening in a much quicker way on the QuickBits channel. And then every Monday we drop the QuickBits podcast, which is my takeaways and the main points of the um, of the cases that we've been covering. So you guys can be like, okay, I'm up to speed. Or if there's cases that aren't really your favorite case you can keep in, in the loop on QuickBits and know when the cases that are your favorites are coming back up to stream. The app does that too. Hey, we're streaming on this topic or that topic. So that's why we have the, um, the QuickBits channel and this channel and the podcast. Hopefully that helps be like, okay, if I'm out of the loop, where do I find it? The QuickBits channel will get you back in the loop real, real quick. And um, we we can clip things out of the live streams to get you just the points uh, and the main points. So um, <laughs> I see misdemeanor OG in the chat saying, any any chance you can interview Koberger, that would be great. Yeah, no, no, we, we don't interview litigants in a case. Nope, 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 nope. Um, occasionally the lawyers involved in a case will, will, will have a chat with after the case, but nope, 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 nope. Um, we we don't we don't really talk to litigants and uh definitely not criminal defendants before they head to trial but i appreciate i appreciate the ask also with i saw a lot of you asking about the um tiktok psychic defamation suit we will have update next updates next week um on that cuz there's a hearing next week so with all of that let us pull up these documents let's do a swoopy doop i've got let me know what you're drinking i've got a i've got all the all the hot water and, and lemon and honey at the moment, just because the weather's changing and my voice is like, what are, what are we even doing? Like, what is life even with this weather? All right. It was like 80 and then it was spinny and then it was stormy. And now we have like snow forecasted. I don't, I don't know. I love weather, but, um, but some days, some, some days she needs to chill. All right. Hold on. 
Um, let's see. This is, this is the first, this is the one I wanted. Emily, you had the right one up. Go, go with your gut girl. Reply in support of motion for order prohibiting contact with prospective jurors absence leave of the court. This is the prosecution's response to the, or reply to the defense's objection to the prosecution's motion. Um, so with all of that, the state submits this reply to address two major flaws in the defendant's memorandum in support. The writing on this has gotten progressively spicier <laughs> as it's gone on. Like it was very, it was, it was somewhat collegial. And then it, um, then it, it disintegrated somewhere in the middle of all these filings, but we covered that on Tuesday. First, first flaw, I suppose. First, let's make this a little bigger. Defendant's explanation of how the survey complies with the non-dissemination order does not withstand even the slightest scrutiny. Hmm. It's like, uh, first, you're wrong. First, you're wrong. Defendant argues that hiring a professional firm to contact prospective jurors in Lataw County and ask questions embedded with specific facts from the case does not violate the non-dissemination order because the embedded facts were already disclosed by the media. And because it's a musical kind of day, were those facts on display, on display? That's like a, that's like a deep reality TV cut. But with respect to both attorneys and their agents, the non-dissemination order prohibits, quote, any out-of-court statement. Okay, mm, prosecution that's modified, though, by what comes next. Any out-of-court statement which a reasonable person would expect to be disseminated by means of public communication that relates to several categories of information. Would a reasonable person expect back the things disclosed in the survey that we haven't seen to be disclosed by the lawyers or not is really the question. Quote, the identity or nature of evidence expected to be presented at trial or any sentencing phase of the proceedings. It's hard to evaluate these arguments because we don't have the surveys, so we don't know what was asked. We have a very small snippet. Remember, the prosecution asked to have their motion unsealed, so I think the court is going to get into specific questions a little bit more during this hearing, and I cannot wait. Defendant's interpretation that his attorneys and their agents can discuss with prospective jurors anything the media is already discussing would eviscerate the non-dissemination order. Okay. Nor can the defendant credibly use the as cover that the survey is asking questions rather than making statements. The mere fact that, quote, the identity or nature of evidence is being presented to the, the jurors in the form of a question does not bring the survey into compliance with the non-dissemination order. The specificity of the facts included in the questions implies to a prospective juror that there, quote, is something to see here. And that is a potential problem. Does the, um, does the question itself lead potential jurors who might not know about the case to be like, Okay, like, no, I hadn't, but like, now tell me more about this. Thereby creating the bias that the defense is trying to prove to move venue. I don't know. Maybe. Undoubtedly, such questions would draw quick objections in the voir dire process. And this is the other issue. The prosecution's like, look, when we voir dire, we all agree on the questions in advance for a survey. You can't just, like, you can't just. Defendant also Baldly asserts that the, uh, I want that to be boldly, but anyway, baldly asserts that the non-dissemination order expressly allows the conduct in which his attorneys and agents have engaged, but he fails to quote or even cite the portion of the non-dissemination order he believes authorizes the conduct. The state's best guess is that the defendant is referring to paragraph two, subparagraph E, which allows the attorneys and their agents to request assistance from the public in obtaining evidence and information necessary to the state's case or the defense's case. Clearly, that subparagraph is in reference to general request made to the public in order to, quote unquote, obtain, not reveal, evidence and information about the case. For example, the attorneys or their agents could put out a statement indicating they are looking for any persons who are present at X location on Y date. Nothing in subparagraph E authorizes the attorneys and their agents to target prospective jurors and share with them specific facts about the case. I want to know these questions. 
because the prosecution is arguing that some of the things being asked are true and some of the things being asked are false. And the defense is saying that's the point. We're trying to gauge how much media people have been exposed to and how much information and or misinformation the media has been, uh, the potential jury pool has been exposed to. Second, much of the defendant's memorandum and the entirety of the affidavits submitted with the memorandum are an attack on an argument the state has not made. Your Honor, they're straw manning. This is not what we're arguing. Stop attacking the thing that we didn't say. Straw manning is a, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that another day. The memorandum, because I will say, I will tangent. <laughs> Don't, I want to, Emily, focus. Court's going to start. We got it. We got to, we can't be late to court afternoon sessions. It's unacceptable to be late in the afternoon, especially, especially if you've been at lunch with all your coworkers. The memorandum and the affidavit will go to great lengths to explain to this court that as a general matter, jury surveys are not inherently improper for the purpose of a change of venue motion. The state has not taken a contrary position. And this is what I was just talking about. The state's not saying that overall they shouldn't do this. The state is saying the way they are doing this violates the non-dissemination order. Footnote one, the state questions the usefulness of such surveys, but the weight, if any, that should be given to the survey is not at issue here and will not be addressed during the change of venue for briefing. Instead, the sole legal basis for the state's motion is that in this particular case, this court's non-dissemination, or I should have just kept reading, this court's non-dissemination order prohibits certain questions defendants, attorneys, and agents choose to include or chose to include in the survey. Given the states, this court's end up until at least this point, defendants' agreements that the non-dissemination order plays a vital role in protecting the integrity of the trial, the state filed its motion to bring this matter to the court's attention, submitted the 29th day of March, Jeff Nye, William Thompson, prosecutors, reply and support. We're going to go to the other reply and support from uh, April 1st from the defense. I think I misstated it earlier and said that both are from the prosecution. From the defense. Um, and then we will go there. So, state of Idaho versus Koberger, reply in support of motion to rescind the order for failure to provide due process. April 1st at 4.17 p.m. Comes now, Brian Koberger, by and through his counsel of record, a reply in support of the motion to rescind the order by this court from March 22nd. This has all happened very quickly. The state's objection and declaration to defendant's motion to rescind the order of the court filed March 27th confirms it new by March 8th of the survey. It feels a little disingenuous to me because the March 8th knowledge was a potential juror saying, hey, people called and asked me questions. And the state then reached out to the... Um, to the local police department and said, can you investigate? They didn't know the full nature of it. They were just aware. The state knew by March 11th, the survey was being conducted by a legitimate company. By March 21st, the defense had explained the basis and validity of the survey. Trust me, bro, it's fine. Yet Friday afternoon, the state filed a motion alleging violation of the revised non-dissemination order. This was the first mention the state made of such an allegation. No, 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 no. They asked you to have a meeting. Once you had a meeting, they went, this is worse than we thought. And then sat down with it. The afternoon filing on March 22nd was done with the intention of attaining an immediate order without a hearing. Of note. Oh, dear. Of note. You guys, I see you saying the court's live. Their feed is not live yet. So they might be starting in person, but they are getting ready to go live. Don't worry. We'll go live to the feed. They set the hearing for literally like four minutes ago. We'll, we'll get there. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. We will be, we will be right to court 
at the end of the next two paragraphs. Of note, due to the bias and interconnectivity in Leetaw County, these are big allegations that the defense is making, citizens called the police and the prosecutor about the survey. The ability of a prosecutor to have an order signed by a judge within the same building within a few hours of the filing and, and a specific fear the defense had articulated to the state during their March 21st hearing or meeting is evidence of the state's intention to facilitate a due process violation. I don't necessarily agree. I think, I think they, we, I think that, I think that they are not. They then go on to describe due process, which means you have the right to be heard. Mr. Koberger's life and liberty are at stake. Ma'am, this is a motion regarding change of venue and they can push the date back two weeks. The trial date's not even set yet. It's going to happen in 2025. Like th this is going to be okay. This is a capital case and he is entitled to be heard on motions pending before this court. Well, he's going to be heard today. Halting preparations for his motion for change of venue denies his constitutional right to a fair trial. The, okay, you can have more time. The survey work is complete for Lataw County and shows the jury pool in Lataw County is biased. The state's action that resulted in the cessation of the surveys prevents other county comparisons. The order should be report reversed now and in the future. No court order should be entered without procedural due process unless the parties so stipulate. The defense is mad. The state is mad. The attorneys are mad. And I think chat's a little mad that we're not in court yet. So don't, don't worry, chat. We're going to court. We've got, we've got it. We've got it. I promise we have a plan and we are going to go to the court hearing. Hopefully it's not via a uh, potato and we are going start. to go to court. The prosecution is just starting to speak um, as we zoom, zoom into court. Remember they turn on their zoom call, their, their court stream at the last possible second. So Chat, are we are we ready to court? I am ready to court. Hold on, let me let me embiggen uh, my screen real quick, and let me share my screen again because now that I've embiggened it, I have messed things up. And we'll go to we'll go to court, y'all. We got we've got we've got this. All right, let's go to court. That's not court. That's court. No, I I think we fit this way. All right chat we swooped we're going to court right now from uh from court on on potato let's go fantastic <laughs> there we go court is in set oh i forgot all right i forgot all rise law nerds of the chat court is now in session for the case of the state versus Brian Koberger, EDB commentating, Lawnards questioning, and court is now in session. Gavel bang sound <laughs> that I keep forgetting to put in my um in my soundboard. Let's put it on the record, please. I'm going to boost this volume just a little bit more and hopefully it doesn't wreck the sound. Hey, thank you. We are now on record. This is State versus Brian Koberger, case number CR 29222805. Mr. Koberger is here in the courtroom with his uh, attorneys, uh, Ms. Taylor, um, and maybe Mr. Loxon is not. He's not remote. He's not remote, Judge, but I think Miss Massot. Yes, I was going to go to her next. Uh, Ms. Massot, Massot is uh, also uh, participating remotely. States represented by Mr. Thompson and Ms. Jennings, who are in the courtroom. And I know the sounds not uh, great. My understanding is uh, Mr. Nye is remote. And hold on, let's. Uh, Miss Beatty? She's not with us today. She's tied up with some other obligations. Voice and drama. Okay, great. Thank you. 
For those of you asking okay, about Koberger, so Koberger is present in court sitting next to his defense attorney in a suit. It looks like he has had a haircut since the last court appearance. We have several issues uh, to address today. Um, and so maybe we should just start with the state's motion for order prohibiting uh, contact with prospective jurors absent plea of court. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and to start, I, I want to I want to help frame what the issue really is today. We just did um, that. We did a good job, I think. We are not here to debate whether uh, the defense contracting for public surveys on sub public sentiment and that sort of thing is or isn't appropriate. That's not the issue at all. I agree. Our sole concern today is the nature of certain questions that have been have been propounded to residents of Lake Talk County. And did that violate uh, by a survey company that's contracted by the defense. And did that violate uh, the and order? we are specifically concerned with how those questions line up in light of the court's very clear non-dissemination order. Um I think the best place to start is to go to at the, the very course, beginning. It's a very uh, good June place to start. June 23rd of 2023 non dissemination order. Uh, and in paragraph enumerated number one, and starting again, at the bottom. The prosecution is going first because they brought this motion, and then the defense will get to go, and then they'll talk about the defense's due process motion. On page one, the court ordered that counsel for all the parties and any of our agents. Uh, and other attorneys are prohibited from making extra judicial statements, written or oral. Such a hard word to say. That the lawyer or agent knows or reasonably should know will have a substantial likelihood of materially prejudicing or otherwise influencing the outcome of the case. And that's essentially the language out of uh, Idaho Professional Conduct Rule 346. But what is particularly important today is the next sentence. Your Honor Director, this order specifically prohibits any out court statement which a reasonable person would expect to be disseminated by means of public communication that relates to the following. And among the items listed are the identity or nature of evidence expected to be presented at trial or any sentencing phase. Any information a lawyer knows or reasonably should know is likely to be inadmissible at trial and that would, if disclosed, create a substantial risk of a prejudicing important impartial trial. And it goes further down to say this includes performance or results of examinations or tests. Our concern here um, is that the questions that were being propounded on behalf of the defense, and let me stop for just a moment. I want to be clear on this. It's not just me that interrupts myself to explain something more and then goes back to the point that I'm making. <laughs> I feel so seen. Such a lawyer thing to do. It's like, put a, put a pin in that thought for a second. Let me finish explaining this and then I'll come back to that. We met with Ms. Taylor last week. Last week? The week before, week before last. The 21st. Thursday. Yeah. Before the Friday. Thursday before the Friday when we filed our motion. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Thursday. Uh, before and we the raised Friday. our concerns yes, yes. day where she confirmed yes, yes, for yes. us that the survey was being conducted on, on behalf of the defense. Uh, and we raised with her the concerns we had about the specific language of the questions that were being asked. Uh, and Ms. Taylor represented to us, uh, and I do not dispute this, that's why I want to make this part of the record, that she had not seen the actual questions themselves, that she had approved the topics that could be uh, looked into during the survey. Oh. Uh, so I want That's new information, that the defense did not craft the questions the survey company did, and the defense did not review them before they started being asked to potential jurors, which is a very interesting thing to note because the way a surveyor might look at something and the way a um, a lawyer might look at something could be very different. That is very interesting info. I want to put that in the record that um, we are not accusing Ms. Taylor of drafting these questions verbatim and then say, go a good note out to make to, uh, the public. A good note. We to are make. concerned, though, that the people hired by the defense to conduct this survey did exactly that. And examples of the things that, that are um, 
of concern can be found in the transcript of one of the calls, as your honor will recall. Um, we had a person come to us who had received one of these calls, actually reported the call. And so our office prepared a transcript and that was attached uh, as exhibit B. I Can we unseal for those? Motion for order prohibiting contact. We want to know. In addition to generic questions about the criminal justice system, here's where we get to things that concern the state. It's happening. It's all happening. It's all happening. It's all happening. Oh, we get to hear the questions. Oh, we get to hear the questions. Immensely. Question. Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger was arrested at his parents' home in Pennsylvania? Question. Have you read, seen, or heard if police found a knife sheath on the bed next to one of the victims? Question. Have you read, seen, or heard that DNA found on the knife sheath was later matched to Brian Koberger? Question. Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger owned the same type of car reported on video driving in the neighborhood where the killings occurred? Oh. Have you seen, read, seen, or heard if the cell phone tower data showed that Brian Koberger made several trips near the victim's home in the month before the killing? Oh. Have you read, seen, or heard if the university students in Moscow and their parents lived in fear until Brian Koberger was arrested for the murders? Oh, boy. Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger said that he was out driving alone on the night of the murders? Have you read, yes. seen, or heard if Brian Koberger stalked one of the victims? Oh, God. Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger had followed one of the victims on social media? Your Honor, there is absolutely no question but that those questions are disseminating by means of communication Evidence expected to be presented, evidence that could be or would be inadmissible at trial. And I will say it, there are a number of these representations placed in the form of a question, but representations of fact that are not true or that would not be offered at trial. Oh boy. Or the performance results of the examination test. And these questions specifically refer to DNA testing. Now, I recognize that the defense says, well, all of this information is out there in the public media somewhere, but that misses the point. That's assuming that every person in Latah County who is called has followed all of this nonsense in social media, has followed extensive coverage. Sir, we're not nonsense. We're law nerds. Just saying we're anti-nonsense. We don't call it nonsense. We call it fuckery. But um, but it's it's now it's. The problem with these questions is they are very specifically related to things that may be evidence in the case, and that is what is in the non-dissemination order. There are people who consciously avoid reading coverage or listening to coverage about this case because they don't want to. Because that's the fallacy lot. of the position defense is taking here. So what the what the defense. What the agents, excuse me, what the agents of the defense have done is they have out, gone out and interrogated 400 citizens of Lake County interrogated. and embedded in them facts specific to this case, some of which are not even true, some of which would not be admissible in court. And those people, whether they had heard that information before or not, are now saturated with that information. Yikes. That is exactly what the non-dissemination order was intended to prohibit. That is reckless conduct, and it's outrageous. Woo! They can ask a survey, Peace. and they can ask people, what do you know about the Brian Koberger case? What have you heard about the Brian Koberger case? What do you think about the Brian Koberger case? Do you have an opinion as to whether he's guilty or not guilty? Have Why you, do you think that? Have you heard headlines about the case? Have you been exposed to information about the case? the open-ended types of questions that you would get on a veneer survey from the court. Yeah, Judge Judge is nodding along. Those questions are um, mm -hmm, a lot. They can ask all those questions, legitimate survey questions if you wanted to do a legitimate survey. He's so, I've never sentence. heard him mad like this. But these questions He's go far beyond that. Not thrilled. And I recognize that uh, 
that it is represented that the survey questioning here in Wayne County with those 400 residents has been completed, but they're already saying they want to take these questions out to other possible veneers. Yep, they do. Doing the same thing in other potential jury pools that they're doing with our own. That is far beyond acceptable. These are questions that, quite frankly, might not be able to ask in voir dire. Some of them Much are, less into an uncontrolled, a... unsupervised environment without any bounds and just recklessly feeding this information, which is sensitive. Oh. And Taylor and looks like her mouth is sensitive an eight straight when it comes line. to information the state does not believe is true or the state does not believe would be admissible or would be offered at trial. Mm -hmm. On the issue of whether information already publicly available isn't included in your honor's order, which it clearly is because it doesn't say otherwise, we know that there is no exception in the court's order saying if the information is already public, publicly known, it's okay to disseminate it again. And indeed, that would be reckless for the very reasons that I just articulated, Judge. We would then be feeding information that is potentially prejudicial or that could affect I think asking potential jurors if they had heard that Brian Koberger stalked one of the victims is potentially prejudicial. And without a fuck ton of evidence, it's likely not coming in at trial because that was not anything that we've seen grounded in fact at all anywhere. So that was not even super reported in the news. That was like social media um, speculation run amok. That wasn't even something that came from like the probable cause affidavit or court documents. So, and same with the following victims on social media, all of that was stuff that was speculation on social media, not from any grounded or fact-based court document. So I can understand why he's so frustrated. The open-mindedness of prospective jurors to people who may not have heard it before. That's completely reckless. And so, Your Honor, based on that, we think this needs to come to a stop. We think if the defense wants to continue doing survey work, which they are welcome to do, given what we've seen here, that the questions need to be approved by the court before they go out, and the question certainly should not include the types of questions, fact-specific questions that have been delivered to 400 citizens of Lake Talk County. That's where we're standing right now, Judge. Thank you. And the prosecution you, just made an important point. We are not saying they cannot survey. We are saying that the questions need to be approved by the court before they survey. And if the court agrees with that, what's going to happen is the survey is going to be thrown off because what the defense said they wanted to do was do the same survey in multiple counties so they could correlate them or check them against one another. And if the questions get thrown out, then they would have to ask to survey in Latah with different individuals again, because if this survey gets thrown out, you can't go out to the, this might render this survey completely useless so they have to be prepared unless you use the same questions. That's the problem. I mean, the damage has been done. Emily, keep going. Yeah, Your Honor, the shit's already out of the horse. The shit's well out of the horse. But yes, you can't compare if the damage has already been done, but you can't do further damage because damage has already been done. It's like, well, the shit's out of the horse now. Just fuck it. I don't think that's uh, what's going to happen. Well, that... That's one argument to make, but we don't want to perpetuate That's the damage that was done. And if they want to do a comparison, then they could have another survey in Latah County and do a responsible survey questionnaire instead of one taking this people. And frankly, they should ensure that they don't go to the same phone numbers that they preloaded with this other factual information preloaded. when they make tainted. their he wanted to say tainted legitimate this information. survey that works. And, the defense's people brought this on themselves. It's not the state's fault. Nobody had control over this other than the folks working for the defense. The problem is there's not much they the court to do to sanction the they defense. Had 
I mean, frankly, if we were in the, the commercial context, we would say, not only will you do this over and do it correctly, but we will not pay you for the work you did that was so outrageously wrong. That's not the context right here. Civil, they would ask I don't care about that. Yes. What I care about is making sure that more people aren't tainted. And I would suspect, Judge, as we move forward in this case, that the state will be asking the defense, and if they aren't willing to provide it, asking the court to order the defense to provide the identity of every person that was contacted in those surveys. So when we get to voir dire, they know. We can identify people who have been contacted, contacted I guess is the best word to describe, <laughs> and faced with these. He wants to say tainted. People who have been tainted by this information. I think that's a fair question. We'll see. Questions. And so we can uh, incorporate that into the questions during voir dire to see just how much impact, if any, it had on each one of those particular jurors. Yeah. I don't know how else to deal with this. He's like, I'm um, flabbergasted. I realize I disqualified 40 people. Well, we 400. 400. It disqualifies yeah, 400. And, and, and we can do that. You know, Lake Talk County has. But almost 40,000 residents, although not all of those are going to be um, oh, part team. of the, the jury panels, perspective, perspective jury panels, but 400 may be a reasonably small number. And yes, I think that certainly would be uh, a viable solution is just identify those Yeet. people. We can certainly identify them by telephone number, Yeet. it was called, uh, and just not include them on the list. The, the and jury, jury services can do that and populate the jury rolls and exclude a certain uh, number of people. It would take a little bit of work, but exclude those 400 names from the jury roll so they don't even get called for jury selection in this case. That's awesome. if you want to talk about uh, due process. Actually, Mr. Nye is the one prepared to talk about due process, process and that's that's why he's on. He's available uh, by Zoom. If you'd like to have that now, that would be good. Mm -hmm. We'll just, I'll come back. To Mr. Nye, the prosecutor you, guy. I'm concerned about that, uh, uh, Ms. Taylor. So go ahead, your turn. Your Honor, we have Brian Edelman ready to testify by Zoom about these surveys if the court would hear his testimony. Uh, I don't, first, I want to hear about the process. I, I care more about how this, uh, how this came down than what he did, although I just learned for the first time that you had nothing to do with the questions. I didn't write the questions, Judge. Those questions are just- I have never seen Judge Judge's face look like this in all the hearings we have done. Like, Judge Judge's eyebrows are up about as high as those eyebrows are gonna go. He's 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 got the what the fuck face from my perspective. Chat, does- does he does judge judge have the what the fuck face for you? Because if if a judge is looking at you like this, uh, y you need to pick your your argument next carefully. Narrated by Brian Edelman, and he can tell you who he is and his educational background. And he just said he doesn't want to hear from Brian Edelman, ma'am. He wants to know how the fuck this happened. He wants to know what the fuck is going down. He wants to know how. He was not asked about any of this. I, the questions are crafted as they're crafted, but I approved him doing this survey. This sure. is not an anomaly. These kinds of surveys are done in high profile cases quite often. This I don't way, know how I could with these present questions? to the court what's going to be required at the venue change hearing without understanding what is going on in, with the public. This is an anonymous survey. This is not one where anybody's identified uh, as far as the defense wants to know this or the prosecutor wants to know this. It's a random survey and there's a reason. Why if it's not identified that way, why were people calling the prosecution and the police saying I'm being asked about the case though? Why there are general questions and more specific questions, and Mr. Edelman can explain that, but I'll I'll do my best to paraphrase that. Okay, well, I'm, I mean, I'm just curious. Did Mr. Edelman uh, was he was he aware of the dissemination order? I don't know if he was aware of that or not, but we gave him no information in the case, Your Honor. He received nothing from us. 
as far as you know, police reports, no contact with our client, no interviews. He received no information. His entire construct of this survey is as he does in from his media, high profile cases. From media. He pulled the media local to this area to see what the most common stories were. Those are things that are in the public arena. So it, this court and council knows how much coverage this case has received. And he does. But some of the people wouldn't have seen that coverage and asking them questions that specifically lines out headlines or facts or whatever gives them that information. If they didn't have it before, it doesn't start with, have you heard about the case? Yes or no. It starts with, did you hear that Brian Koberger stalked one of the victims? Did you hear that Brian Koberger um, followed a victim on social media? Did you hear that but this is, this is piggly wiggly conversation. Oh my God. Did you hear that there was a knife sheath? Did you hear that his, his DNA was found on the knife sheath? This isn't open-ended. Did you hear about the case? Have you formed opinions about the case? Do you have an opinion as to whether Brian Koberger is guilty or innocent? Those weren't the questions. That's what he does by looking only at, what, at what's in the public. We didn't provide him any police reports. It doesn't make it we right, though. I'm sorry. It, it, it's just that, that, that does miss the point. I mean, it's Ma'am, it doesn't pass the vibe check. The court's like, this is not the question I asked you. I am frustrated. Those, que uh, the, those questions are something else. And chat, I see your questions. I'm holding them till we get to Q&A or we'll and never finish court today. That we have worked so hard, including you, okay, both sides, to... Oh, I'm backing up. He's mad and I, I don't want to interrupt. He's he's getting ready. He's getting ready to, to, uh, to roll at the moment. What's in the public. We didn't provide him any police reports. We didn't... Ooh. I'm sorry. It, it, it's just... That, that that does miss the point. I mean, it's kind of ironic that we have worked so hard, including you, okay, both sides, to protect uh, a fair trial, okay? And our concern from the very beginning was all the media stuff floating around, okay, that, that affects your client, Mr. Koberger, uh, to get a fair trial. And some of these some of these questions actually create uh, a concern about um, well that they're inculpatory. Mm -hmm. it, it, it could be prejudiced for his client. Okay, and then I'm just surprised that that both of you didn't come together and say, you know, there are certain things that we don't we we, we probably shouldn't uh, put into the public on a telephone call. The defense didn't ask the prosecution at all. They just put the survey out and they didn't review the questions. How could they review the questions with the prosecution when they didn't review the questions? That's, I mean, it really concerns me. And that's why I did what I did that Friday. Now I'm being accused of violating a due process, which is a whole big issue for me. He's passed about that. I too. can understand that that would not be taken the court i have to represent my client to the best of my ability and the reason for that you have offended Your Honor, judge. with all due respect i was shocked to see the court issue an order within hours of the state filing a motion late on a friday without giving us a chance to be heard but you find and that's going to delve into our argument on due process but since it came up and since that feels like the elephant in the room right now. I think maybe we should just go ahead and address that. Sure. And that was my motion. And I asked you to set aside the order that you made without having a chance to hear from us making a decision that oh, now dear. you're locked in. To, Did you see and his it was face? a one-sided decision. <laughs> my Look at his face when he puts his glasses down. Look, th this... Look, as lawyers, you have to read the judges. You have to read the judges. Um, you have to read the judges' face and body language and actions. He is pissed. Of my ability, and the reason for that, Your Honor, with all due respect, I was shocked to see the court issue an order within 
hours of the state filing a motion late on a Friday without giving us a chance to be heard. And that's going to delve into our argument on due process. But since it came up and since that feels like the elephant in the room right now, I think maybe we should just go ahead and address that. Oh, yeah. Sure. So you've and that was my the judge's integrity. So and I asked you to set aside the order that you made without having a chance to hear from us making a decision that now <laughs> you're locked in to. And it was a one-sided I'm not decision. Locked in anything. My order didn't say it was permanent. Maybe and I, it told you that I was going to have a hearing. Maybe I phrased that very poorly. <laughs> it's a decision that you already made. I made okay, let's go, let's go back. I got the I got the motion at 4 30 on Friday. Now it, it doesn't even reflect, you know, just when it was filed because Odyssey has a delay, right? That's the court so filing. I get system. the motion at at 4 30. And are you in danger, girl? I get a response from you at 4 45. <laughs> right, right? I, I don't know what time you received it, but I filed that's, an that's objection the minute I could. Because then you know that about five o'clock, that's what I issued that. So I had a half an hour. I I read the the materials that were, support, were uh, attached to the motion that the state filed, and I um, had very little information. But it seemed like uh, there were some real legitimate concerns about the survey. And obviously, it turns out there are concerns, legitimate concerns about what was done in the survey. So in the in the uh, my order, I told you that I was going to set a hearing. So I don't know what your understanding is with uh, with uh, that's not a due process issue. Just the process. That's not a due process okay, issue. But I He's so mad on Friday sent this hearing. So what are we doing today? The hearing. Okay. Your Honor, I'm we're doing the hearing. You are hearing you out. Both sides have the opportunity you to be heard. You had notice. I mean, really, that's that's Woo! what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what the law. What is your understanding of uh, due process? <laughs> My understanding Shit. is that I should have notice and an opportunity to be heard. And you did. And you're doing that right the fuck now is what he wants to say. You're do, ma'am, that's what's happening here. He's like, we asked you to pause the survey until we could have a hearing. That is it. That is not a due process violation. You're being heard this moment a week, less than a week after. Woo, Judge Judge is so mad. And I think he's restraining himself because you can't, as the judge, appear as if you are coming down on the defense or you are not, um, you are biased against the defense, but throwing out that the court has violated due process is a big, big allegation. So I think he is uh, restraining his frustration, though you can see it on his face, to say, no, that's what we're doing now. There's been no violation. You've not been harmed. Your case has not been derailed. If you need an extra week or two or three, to have your motion on change of venue heard, then we will have your motion on change of venue heard. It's set for May, 2024. We haven't even set a trial date, but it's not gonna be before like June, 2025. We're hearing this motion a year before jury selection even begins. How are you harmed? Is that I should have noticed and an opportunity to be heard. And you did that. I, I'm having that now, but there has been a decision made by this court almost two weeks ago that stopped us from completing our work. I understand that Mr. Thompson raised a concern and his last paragraph to the court in his motion was, it seems that it may have violated the non-dissemination order. And so we're stopped from completing our comparative surveys right there when we're up against the deadline to get to our motion to change a venue. Then ask for my I'm time. looking at, I, <laughs> it stops me from doing the work and meeting the deadlines to argue for Brian to be in a place where he can have a fair trial. Do you see? Him? I think like the court should not have issued an order 
stopping us, but set a hearing, shortened time, set it for Monday morning. If the court wanted to set a hearing for that Monday morning, he wanted you to stop. We wouldn't have lost two weeks worth of work if the court chooses to let us complete the work. So that could have been more damage. I mean, you know, this, wow. two, this less than two weeks really has very, very little impact oh, okay, on your your work. It it does have an impact. You we, are. We, we have a, a, a trial set. We I have. Mean, come on. We have our motion to change venue. We don't have trial. You're right. We don't have trial. My understanding was that we were going to okay. hear the venue change and the court was going to make a decision and then set trial so that we didn't send out a bunch of subpoenas and reserve this courtroom unless we're going to stay here. That was my understanding. My problem, what sets me back, is getting my work complete to get my briefing to the state in the time and the deadline that I was already given and meeting that hearing date that's set for venue change. And from there, everything else flows. When are we going to set trial? Well, this, we wouldn't even be here, okay, if there was some communication between you and the, and the state about the survey. I, True. True. There are things I can communicate with the state about, and there are things that I cannot communicate with the state about. How I'm preparing my case is not one of those things. It's just not one of those things. I go and see Bill and Ashley. I go to their office every week. Oftentimes we talk. We email each other. We talk to each other. But I don't need their permission every step of the way to Look, prepare my judge, case. That's Doing these surveys. That's true. But the survey questions um, are, are teetering into a different realm is not an anomaly. This is something that's done in these high profile cases. Well, apparently, uh, Mr. Alden did not even uh, see the non dissemination order, and you apparently did not give that to him. Yes. Uh, so this is this is a very um, not a usual case, number one. And you know that we've been working very, very hard to keep the sort of noise out of the case. And now it's been injected, at least to these four, 400 people, without a permission of the court, and those without are discuss about discussion with, with the state. That's a ripple effect. I mean, that's troublesome. And then, and then when I'm being accused, directly accused. Your Honor, it just for what it's worth, um, there's over 12,000 lawnards here. And uh, we did we did our own survey on Tuesday. They are the lawnards are also troubled. Um, the lawnards are also troubled. He's so pissed. Like, if you have not seen Judge Rage, a lot of judges will not scream and yell, particularly at the defense. A, that's a lot of judges will never lose their cool like that. This is about as mad as I have ever seen this judge. Um, he is normally pretty calm and affable and likes to talk to the attorneys even if he disagrees with their arguments he is very upset that he has been accused of violating due process um on this issue particularly Woo! without discu discussion with with the state i mean that's troublesome and then and then when i'm being accused directly accused okay by you in your grief that I violated his due process rights. Now, that's not what the law says, and that's not what the facts are. And you, you even cited cases that say exactly mm -hmm. what due process is mm -hmm. in the law, right? I understand that, and I agree that's what due process is. My issue is that the order... There is one thing that is is really is really going to get a judge to flame out more than just about anything else and that is questioning their integrity is is going to spin them sideways um uh, most lawyers do not like to have their integrity questioned but the judge especially in this circumstance when it was a non-permanent order it was a wait until we have a hearing order to throw out that that's a due process violation in that circumstance 
is a very big attack on his integrity. And that is part of why he is so offended. Um, uh, yeah. It was signed, stopping our work without a chance to be heard. You it's filed an objection. The state and the court have decided we violated the non-dissemination order, and we didn't. All I was doing was stalling. Yeah, pause. Okay, for less than two weeks so Time we out. have this here. Time Number out. One. Now, if you feel like you've been prejudiced or your client has been prejudiced for Tell me less how. than two weeks Tell me how. Okay, in this work, I'll push it out. I'll just push out the, the trial. I mean, not the trial, but the, the hearing. The hearing. Exactly. I mean, does that is that satisfactory? He just asked for more Your time. Honor, I, I think that might be what we need. I need Why? I need to figure out. She was the one that was pushing to have the motion for change of venue in May. The prosecution said this is so premature. We aren't even we aren't even close to having this hearing in May. We don't even have a trial date. This is too soon. And the defense pushed and pushed and pushed and said we need to have this hearing. In May, she pushed it. So why not just say, you've paused our work. We are not going to complete it in time. We now need you to push out the date of the motion hearing. Fine. Which is what he just suggested. Woo! If we're going to be able to continue the surveys. But if we are, I expect that we will need some additional time to get them done so that I can get the work to the state to review. Okay, well, that's a different issue. I, ne I, mean, I, never, I never said... No, you can't do a survey. This was a total shock to me that Friday at 4.30. I can understand that. It the judge had no idea these surveys were happening, and I bet he was shocked about the, uh, the questions. I've never said, no, you can't do a survey. This was a total shock to me that Friday. I was also shocked. At 4.30. I can understand that. It was I had a shock to, to the I state. I had to stall it out, okay? Because so that we could all talk about it and figure out what is the right path. And that's how this judge okay? operates. Because this is a big deal. And I take it very, very seriously. And I was surprised, okay, that this was happening behind our backs, my backs. Oh, okay? The, the, I, Ooh. I understand that this probably is the first time this court has run into it. I know it was the first time that Mr. Thompson has run into it. I haven't used the survey in my own cases because I haven't had a case like Brian's case before. This is an extremely... Ma'am, the survey isn't the issue. It's the, it's the questions. It's the way it was approached that is the issue. And the judge, this judge particularly, does not like feeling like he is not in control of what's happening. It is very clear. I don't practice in front of this judge. I've seen him on the hearings that y'all have seen him on. But it's very clear that this judge likes to know what is happening in his cases and in his courtroom. How did anyone think that this was going to be okay? A high-profile case. I've been involved in a lot of capital cases, and I understand the standard of care in capital cases. I also know that this very kind of survey was used about seven years ago in Kootenai County in another high profile case. I wasn't on the case, but I'm aware of it. I'm aware that this very survey has been used in other jurisdictions, other counties in Idaho and other states Not in those really questions. high profile cases. So I understand that it was a surprise to Mr. Thompson. He told me it was. And I'm hearing the court say that's a surprise as well. It's My how it was done. I'm not concerned. I figured there was going to be a survey at some point. There would have to be. It was these, the way it was done, okay, and the questions that were asked. It was these fucking that questions. That is the real problem, as Mr. Thompson pointed out. So the way it was done, I know in the other Kootenai County case, permission to do a survey wasn't sought of the state, the prosecutor, or the judge. I can comment on that one. I know about that. Ooh. I don't know about the other cases. So that takes us to why did we ask the questions we asked? She doesn't know because she I, didn't write them. I don't think it's common to get permission from the state to do our work. I think that it's a surprise because it's the first time that's happened, at least when this court's been on the bench and in Mr. Thompson's tenure. It's a surprise because there's a non-dissemination order that says that the facts of the case can't be discussed by the attorneys or their agents, and those questions are very pointed. 
So I understand that. <laughs> when I met with Bill and Ashley in their office on the 21st, I asked them you were not, not asking to for give you the police well. reports that they had in the transcript without me having a chance to be heard because I didn't want an order without us being able to talk to the court. I asked if we could maybe set up an on the record meeting with the court to talk about this. And that wasn't what was done. It was Friday when this came, went out. Sure. I mean, I would have been available on Friday to talk about it if that's if that was necessary. I, I would have gladly sat down. Um, I did. I didn't offer that next Friday. I would have come to town for it. I offered the following Thursday and Friday, knowing that I had a lot of availability both of those days. I would have come to town. I would have gladly sat down. By this point, the prosecutor knows I'm not telling him my preparation in the case, and I could have explained it. The thing I didn't want to happen is exactly what did what did happen. All of a sudden, there's an accusation against us, and there's an order sign stopping us. I appreciate the court being willing to just push everything out two weeks. I think that's helpful, and, and if that's what the court's willing to do, that's fine. But the problem is we are stopped, and then we have to respond to this. And if you think about the non-dissemination order, for sure, we wanted that non-dissemination order. We're the ones that asked for it. We're the ones that argued for it. And helped write we it also and stipulated to it. The non-dissemination order started with y'all, but now you're calling jurors and asking them, did you hear that Brian Koberger stalked one of the victims, which is not supported in any court document anywhere? It is speculation from the online space that the media didn't, not much of the media picked up and ran with because it's not founded in facts. So that's part of the problem is that there are things that the prosecution says are untrue that are being asked of potential jurors. And if you get a phone call saying, did you hear this about this case? Aren't you going to ask your family, did you? Did you ever hear that this guy stalked one of his victims? You're going to ask those questions. So it's not just the 400 people. It is the 400 people and the ripple effect of who those people then talk to. Oh, that our non-dissemination order mimics Idaho Rule of Professional Conduct 3.6. And when you look at that in the comments of that, I think it's helpful. There are things that we can say publicly, but we choose not to. We don't, our team doesn't even so much as answer no comment to emails, to calls, to people trying to talk to us because we just don't want to do that. It's easier to say nothing. So the construct of this survey is to ask these general questions. And then you ask specific ones because you get different answers when you ask those. It is not injecting information. They are, have you read, seen, or heard? And remember, these are anonymous and these are random. So they're not planned. Nobody's planned to be contacted. I don't know the names. I'm sure I can get the phone numbers if that's what the court wants. But I don't know who the people are. Nobody's identified as the person they're being called on behalf of, even when pressed by Detective Payne. That's not the point. That people conducting the survey didn't know. If we go back to the non-dissemination order, which mirrors rule 3.6, that's to prevent lawyers involved in a case from making statements that will be widely disseminated. Or their right? agents. To it says, talk or to the their press. And the purpose of that is because I read the police reports. I would have a little more credibility than anybody else on the street saying something about the case. Same with Bill. That's the purpose of it. So that we don't say things to the press on Dateline, on 48 Hours, because we'd actually read police reports, we've interviewed people, and we're doing the work on the case. So when you have an anonymous survey that doesn't identify the person conducting the survey, didn't know who was behind it as far as which party to the case, they can't answer that. So all of a sudden, their questioning about what you've seen in the media doesn't come from a particular party in the case. And the purpose of it mm -hmm. is to ferret out what if people have exposure to the case. If you look at state's attachment B, you can see 
on page two that there's questions and I'm at lines 10 through 12 about what they know about the case from the media. This is all again looking at our non-dissemination order and looking at the rule, things that are in the public record, right? That everything is public in this case, unless we specifically seal it. So this person says they- Half of the docket is sealed. Everything is public. There are- <sighs> Okay. I don't know much. And then if you go to page four, there are several things they do know. And that's the purpose of it. When somebody is given a broad question, tell me what you know about this. They're like, uh, I don't know. I don't really know what you want, so I'm not going to say anything. And they don't give you an answer. But when you say, have you read, seen, or heard X? Well, yeah. And then it's the next question. And if the answer is, no, I don't, it's next question. Nobody's saying, well, it was in the newspaper on 15 occasions. And this is particularly borne out point. when you think about the things and the state said it, some of these things are things that are just not true. That's what the Haddon case tells me I have to show you. It's not enough that there's just a lot of media coverage and it's a lot more harmful if it's media coverage about things that aren't true. So it's nobody's injecting anything into the Look case. A response. random small percentage of the population is contacted. Ooh. Have you read, seen, or the heard the things that are lifted straight out of the media? And if the answer is yes, you move on. If the answer is no, you move on. That's that's what the survey was about. And you can me. see why, looking at pages two and four of States Exhibit B. Can you spell that as a T? Because we, we want to know what's in there. What the words in the non dissemination order mean. When are are we gonna get to what the definition of is is? Because I feel like we're gonna get to a lot of legal hair splitting in a minute here, Anne. Yikes. You say we made we white we disseminated information. That means to make widely available. This is a one-on-one -on -one conversation with no party identified. This isn't making it widely available. <laughs> judge, when you judge talk about disseminating information, all. the definition of that is to put it out there by public means, radio, TV, social media. Oh, and judge, that's judge. not what was happening either. These, no. these were questions. And they were things lifted 100% from the media, 100% already in the public record, and it is a one-by-one -one conversation. This isn't something that's being put out there through social. It, well, it kind of is. Well, me. now it is, but I certainly it's didn't four, expect four this. Four people, okay? It's planting. Yeah, the shit's way out of the horse now. Some seeds where then people are encouraging or encouraged or they say, oh, well, I didn't know that. I'm going to look more into this. I mean, again, I mean, we, we were we were trying to keep the false information that was out there in at a minimum media land uh, that it wasn't going to affect your client. Judge, judge, because I, I agree. This is less than one percent of the population. It's one on one. It's not by means of public communication. To think about alleging that we violated the non-dissemination order is basically alleging that we violated our ethical rules as well. And there's parts to and it. I don't can't... You of that, especially now that I know that you uh, that that you didn't. You I didn't call... write the questions, yeah, but I knew what write. was going to happen. Well, I... I didn't write the questions, but I knew what was going to happen. She didn't say she didn't read the questions. The prosecution said it's our understanding that she didn't review the questions, but that's not what she just said. She said, I didn't write the questions, but I knew what was going to happen. She the court saying I'm not accuse you of, accusing you of violating your ethical rules, but it might have violated this court order, but the survey company might have violated the order that they weren't aware that they were a party to. The prosecution didn't ask for sanctions. The prosecution asked for it to stop. 
Uh... I mean, I, I'm, I take responsibility for the choices on the case, Judge, but I just don't think this is a violation of the ethical rules or non-dissemination order. These are questions about things already in the public record. That's in our order. That's in the rule. Let me, let me ask you this. I mean, really, getting hit by this on late on fr Friday afternoon, okay? I mean, I'm not sure what a judge should do in a situation like that. Would I just say, yeah, no, keep going until we can have a hearing in two weeks or less than two weeks? Nope. Or do you just pause it down so that everybody can talk about it and figure out if there is an issue? That's how I looked at it. From, my, from where I was sitting and what the inf information that was provided to me. I and you did respond to it, but you said you were going to submit a, a brief and affidavit. That's great. But I had it was 5 o'clock on Friday. Stop I talking know. to jurors. So stop so, talking to jurors. I, I mean... I can't tell you Potential how frustrating jurors. that was for me. I've had this conversation with the prosecutor the day before. I'd offered to come and talk to the court and let the court look at all this. I knew full well if they did exactly what they did, the court would sign an order before I had a chance to say, hey, wait a minute. Let's really look at all of the words in the non-dissemination. But now you're here to say, hey, wait a minute. Uh order. Let me tell you why we did this. I knew exactly what would happen. I. I don't want to say that there's like that you should do something different. I want to be heard on these things. I don't want the court okay. to on a Friday night get a flurry of things that I can't respond to and ask you to think about the bigger context. It, we're lawyers, words mean something. Well, did also, you think I wasn't going to give you an opportunity to to be heard. No, your order said I could be heard later, but there was a decision that was made then. And it's hard for me to wrap my head around the court taking this as an emergency motion when the words in the state's motion telling you put a stop to it are, it seems like they might have violated this. That is a weak accusation for the court to take an emergency order position on. But I know why the court did. The court has all of this and no context for it. And it's a front. The context, I don't, I, ma'am, I don't know if the context makes the questions less concerning to the prosecution and the court, which is why they asked for it to pause. And if you need to push your motion back till June, you're still more than a year out of a trial date that hasn't been set yet. There's no harm there. The harm is that the damage is going to get worse as more people are contacted. There's no harm to pausing it. Well, uh... Friday night. And I mean, if you'd received this on Thursday, my guess is you would have said, we're having a hearing Friday morning. I don't care if it's by Zoom. Right. I, I, I told you all, both sides, you know, if you need to have a quick hearing, let me know. We can do it on Zoom. I mean, I want to move this thing along. We know that. I've, and I've been available. spending all this, all this energy, okay, yeah. about this issue. I lost a weekend of what I planned to respond to this. I thought we would probably be dealing with it on an on in the in chambers on the record meeting on the Thursday or Friday until I got the motion. Yeah, I have about seven briefs in now. Well, you, you no. can see we lost a lot of time. No, 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 no. There's over your honor, there's like 13, I think. Cause uh I, I feel you. I'm not complaining about it because I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm not either. I, the, the last Interesting thing content. I'm going to say on this, Judge, is that that non-dissemination order contemplates that you make this statement that you reasonably know is going to go out and harm the truck. This survey was never intended to do anything but identify issues within this county to support or defeat our argument for venue change. But you might have created when issues. you hear from Brian Edelman, which I don't know if you have to now because I've said this sort of things. I'm, I'm, I'm if, happy to hear what he has to say. We want to hear him, we're here. We're he all here. Said, we're we're gathered here today. You would know and you probably know from his affidavit sometimes he re re recommends against venue change sure. because it's not there. He's done with Latah County. The results aren't compiled yet. 
I anticipate he'll recommend we change venue. Where we are now is we'd like to finish the other two counties. You don't have to do two. You, you did say that he said that uh, Laycock County is biased. Yes. He I said. anticipate he's going to recommend the change. No, 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 no. That's not what you said in your motion. What you said in your motion is that Laytaw County is biased. That's what you said in your motion. We just read it. I'm, I'm interested from him what how he defines bias. <clears throat> and we, all, we all have some biases. I will not put words in his mouth for that one. I, I'm, I'm not expecting you to do that. I, I will either have him testify today if you want to hear it today, yes. or we'll do it at the venue change hearing Today. when we get there. The Today. question, I understand the court's willing to set our deadlines out two more weeks for venue. Of course they were. I, the question remains then, what, what do I need to show you? What do I need to present to you so that we can do a survey, a comparative survey? The target is two additional counties, and I really hate that I'm in here telling you all what, what we need to do, but here we are. So what we need to do is I mean, survey two additional counties. And I mean, we don't have to, we can come in with what we have, but right. generally I think courts ask, where could we go? And I think that's a fair question here because we do know the media coverage has been extensive. And so I think it's fair to understand if there's a difference. If yeah, there's not, then you're left me, or you can tell me what, what counties? I mean, I can. I. Do you want me to publicly disseminate that? Because this is the very definition of public well, I, dissemination. I don't, I don't oh. know if that should. Oh. Uh, that felt like a lot of snark. Like, this is the definition of public dissemination. Um, I mean. It be done or, or it seems like um, it could have some. Uh, whether or not there's some credibility of a survey, depending I, on what county you are looking at. We you know we have very different counties and different thinking uh, throughout this state. So I don't know what is what uh, Mr. Edelman, Edelman, Edelman. Me, Edelman uh, has in mind or what you have in mind. I, I can tell you, Your Honor. Um, his recommendation is that we do one of the counties in Southeast Idaho because it's a different news feed and it's not on the front page of the paper every day. So we will do a Southeastern Idaho count. That would either be Bannock or Bonneville. And I think Bonneville is slightly bigger than Bannock. The other county um, is Ada. And the reason for Ada is because it has a very large courthouse with a lot of good security. Uh, and it, that court system has handled high profile cases in a way that's safe for everybody. The population's very large there. So even if we had to draw off a lot of jurors would have the population there to do it. Additionally, Ada County makes sense when you look at the rule 21 B, um, the convenience because of the airport and the number of out of town people that will be coming in and the ability to have hotels and restaurants where there would be pe people wouldn't be running. She definitely wants to move it to Boise. So that's kind of Ada makes a lot here. of sense for a lot of reasons to me, those reasons. Ada being where Boise is. Um, she has wanted this to move to Boise for quite a while. Uh, the courthouse security and places to stay among them. But um, Mr. Edelman, Dr. Um, all of our fine law nerds from Idaho. Are the hotels substantially better in Boise? Is this just like she doesn't want to stay in Lata County? Is this is it easier for the defense to just be in Boise? I would imagine, yes. Um, I would imagine that's a, a big part of it. Dr. Edelman has told us that because of the news feed, that we really need to do a southeastern Idaho. And so the decision was to do both. And in my mind, that is because it it makes sense to know if we're going to go to the time to understand this and really give the court a picture the court might want to know those two questions thank you sure um i don't think i have anything left to say right now okay thank you um she's like but i will all right mr thompson or mr nye 
I'm not sure that the due process issue is something that's at issue right now. I think I already made it this decision. I mean, based on the facts and the and the law. I mean, absolutely. There, there's no due process violation here. No. There is nothing wrong. In fact, law contemplates the court can take emergency action to stop something and call a timeout until it affords everybody the opportunity to have their say and the court can make the final decision. That is all your honor did here. And I would suggest, Judge, that um, it would not be hey, George. prudent or proper for your honor to change or okay. limit your own authority on that. I think that you have to okay. continue to reserve okay. to yourself the ability to act quickly to cause a timeout if you are alarmed sufficiently to justify that and to give the parties an opportunity to appear before you and sort it out. Before, that's what I'm not going to change that. That's Good. for sure because the law allows me to do that. Yes, sir. And I know what due process means. And, and I say that only only in light of, of an email that uh, your staff attorney sent to us the other day ago that suggested that maybe the court was not going to be entering orders without full hearings with everybody. Oh well, but Ms. I, Taylor wanted. She said, "From here on out, we're going to talk about that too," because now. I understand because I haven't seen it yet because I didn't have my didn't have my, uh, computer that you are stipulating to uh, to sealing all of the discovery stuff and and I just stopped okay in terms of uh, signing on those orders that you're sending me because I don't want to be accused of doing the wrong thing and there's another another situation that you brought up. Uh, Ms. Taylor, about that there was a prior thing where I had done that about the IPD, yeah. and the state uh, asked to do a public uh, order, just to say that we provided the IDG or some of the IDG to you, uh, and that doesn't really say anything except that. And but you you were cr criticizing me for that too. Oh. Your Honor, to be clear, it's not the content. And to be fair, in the context of being an advocate for your client, different than being an advocate for the state, sometimes you do have to question the judge's actions, but he is very, very offended by the way that she accused him of a due process violation on this. He is not pleased at all that order my concern is the process my my concern is you it feels like from our perspective that mr thompson says hey judge can you do this and i'm getting ready to weigh in and it gets done you I filed do. you you filed an objection you said we have an issue with this you didn't say nothing you weren't silent like from our perspective that Mr. Thompson says, hey, judge, can you do this? And I'm getting ready to weigh in and it gets done. I, you didn't, you, I, I didn't get a response from you. Your Honor, that was out the same day. I was in the process of writing, and this was by letter, it wasn't by motion. I was in the process of writing a letter to the court asking to be heard on some issues and the order was signed or the, the new order was generated. The content of it isn't the problem. It's the concern about the problem. Miss C in the chat said, oh my God, is she trying to say the prosecution controls the judge? She said in her motion that I covered at the beginning of this stream that because of the bias and interconnectedness in Laytaw County, she is deeply concerned, and I'm paraphrasing that one part, that the prosecution can go and get a signature from a judge to stop the things that they are doing on the same day. It was absolutely in the motion that she filed. Process the concern about making sure we have a clear record of what's done and the concern about things halting what we're doing before we can be heard. And okay, I, I did you when what you're doing can't be undone when the bell can't be unrung when the shit can't be put back in the horse though pausing is appropriate until everyone can be heard because the state doesn't have a lot of remedies here 
there is not much the state can do to undo what you've done except exclude the 400 jurors. So pausing, from my perspective, is appropriate until it can get sorted out. And again, we're not on the cusp of trial. There's no trial date. But she has said repeatedly that she will not be ready before June 2025. I bet to be uh, not sealed. The other, no. the other part, all the IDD stuff, that's like six pages, seven no, pages. No, Your Honor, I don't have a problem with what the court ended up doing. I was concerned about the process. And then having this order issue on a Friday without having an opportunity to talk about it, my alarm bells go off. And I think this can't happen. Um, That's how the state feels about your probably questions, have the court's though. attention squarely on me in this issue, uh, which I anticipated. But but I'm what I didn't both of you. want to have is I don't want to have the prosecutor writing the court letters and the court doing something and me running around trying to catch up. I mean, the thing that happened you is filed. fine. But then we have this other thing that happened, and I don't want this habit. I understand. I understand. Under I'm sorry. The, the, the survey. This. That's what. Yeah. Saying. The order yeah. to stop. Yeah. So. It, He's saying, yeah, and the survey happened, and the survey happened. It's that there are two things that have happened without me being able to even weigh in. That's done when the prosecutor asks you to do something. And I don't like that. I, I want to have opportunities to be heard. I certainly understand a court's emergency power. But if this was an emergency, the state knew from March 8th it about these like surveys. The state sat the down state. and talked to me, and I offered to see you with the state. Being heard and now. then their motion said it seems like it might be a violation. So I think maybe we need to define emergency a little bit better because I know you have those powers, and I wouldn't ask you to not use the powers that you have. I think the problem here is the way this gets presented when there were a lot of different roads and it cuts us off. And that's what I don't want to have. Okay. I, I want I want to solve this problem if it's possible. One, one of the things I mean because you have filed motions where you didn't ask for a hearing. Mm -hmm. there, there's still one, you know, couple hanging out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, and so He's just I don't know what if I'm waiting. Okay. If you're asking for a hearing or not, or if you're, because historically you, you guys have worked really well together. Okay. Stipulations. But then I don't get a stipulation. I don't get a request for a hearing. So what am I supposed to do then? So what I'm starting to, to wonder about is maybe we should just have a, uh, a hearing, okay, at least once a week. I mean, uh, a month. <laughs> okay, maybe God. once a week. I'm here every maybe week. Maybe once a week. Okay, you can do it. Oh God, no! Excuse, Your Honor, what? Like a Thursday afternoon, okay. That's the day I'm here. And then, oh, okay. So, and then, sir, I like streaming in the morning on Thursday. What? What are? What? What? Every week, we're gonna just see. We're just going to have a, a little chitty chitty chat chat every Thursday between now and 2025. We can kind of clean out a lot of these things that are sealed or, you know, arguments that this or that. Um, I don't particularly want to do that, but I, you, you, you and, uh, and the court, okay, both of you, I say you, both of both sides, uh, that you work really hard, okay, to protect the goal of a fair trial. And um, all of a sudden, I feel like it's cracking a little bit with the, the work together, okay, because if, if we have to have hearings on every single thing, we got a long ways to go. And it's a lot and of short time. time it's a there. lot of work. It's a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. And it just makes everything more difficult. Uh, so if you can come together on certain things, then it's a stipulation that we need, then it's a stipulation. If it's a hearing, it needs a hearing. I'm fine with accommodating 
whatever needs He's to like, happen. Can y'all just communicate with me? Notice, right. Can you just communicate with because, me? Because, uh, like I said before, I just I just want to keep moving on this. Just so taking a long time. Your Honor, I think the record shows uh, that we have been able to stipulate probably to the majority of things. I don't keep count. Uh, there are some issues they that have we have not been able well. to reach agreement on. Uh, and bringing <laughs> His robe is like half unzipped. Your honor is, he's just like, what the fuck are you guys doing to me? He's just, just done. Back to the issues that are before the court right now. I realize we have a bigger picture to talk about. Um, but the defense makes a big deal about the state hearing that there was these surveys, there were surveys going on in our community back in around the 8th or so of March. And as the declaration that's been filed with the court shows, yes, we did. And we immediately referred that to law enforcement to investigate, find out what these surveys are about, find out who these people are that are doing the survey if you can, get that information to us. And that process is in the works. And just days before we were able to meet Ms. Taylor on the 21st of March, just days before we got the reports from the police department, and we also got that recording. That frankly, the recording is the icebreaker on this. It's the game. He's like, we didn't know how bad it was till we heard it for ourselves. And then we all sat around in the office and went, Well, fuck. What now? Because th this is uh ooh, this is not great. That's that's what happened. That's why it took them a minute to file it because uh, they didn't quite appreciate exactly how bad it was till they heard exactly what questions were being asked from the recording because people aren't going to necessarily remember. It's like somebody called me about this case and it was unusual. It wasn't until they heard exactly the questions. And that is when it became clear to them that it was a problem. Changer, because it's literally what was being said, what was being asked, what was being represented in the form of the question. Mm -hmm. Ms. Jennings called and reached out to Ms. Taylor and said, do you know anything about this survey? Ms. Taylor says, yes, I'll be in town on Thursday. I'll probably talk about it. Okay, so we, we sat and waited. I can tell you, I suspected that this was something the defensive commission from the first we heard of it. But I didn't feel that we had enough information about the nature of the survey to determine whether it was problematic. And we've said this already, and it, and it keeps getting missed in the arguments here. We don't care about surveys. We care about these particular questions asked in this particular survey. The defense is welcome to contract with people from California or wherever. I don't care to go and ask people, Not can California. you be fair? What have you heard about this? All of those questions that um, Ms. Taylor was just talking about at you know page two of the transcript, those are appropriate questions for a survey. Page four, are not appropriate questions for a survey. Just because they're put in the form of the question doesn't change the fact that they are an affirmative representation of a fact that if the hearer, the listener, was not aware of it, now, now they have been aware. tainted by it. Right. They have been, in your, own, in your honor's words, they have been injected with that information. Sir, we can't go from the taint to injecting. It's gonna, it's gonna get weird. Um, it's it's gonna it's just gonna get weird. It's gonna get weird. We just came off of a trial where um, they spent days and days and days talking about whether something was half cocked or fully cocked. So, sir, if we go from taint to injection, it's gonna get bad. Just saying. That is a clear violation of the non dissemination order. To think there's a distinction between putting something out in a press release and talking to a private citizen is is a distinction without substance. Those are both public contacts. And I can guarantee that if I went down to the bar and had a few drinks and was talking with some people and say, hey, did you know about this about the covert case and the defense found out about it, they would go ballistic. They would lose their and for good reason. Minds. Right, because it would be That should never way. happen. Right. But that's exactly what's happened here. Not by Ms. Taylor. I'm not faulting Ms. Taylor for the questions themselves. But I'm fucking But by the pissed. people they hired. Yeah. to do this. Yep. And it had to stop. Your honor was absolutely correct. Cut it off. And let's sort this thing out. And if we lose two weeks, well, we can make up two weeks. 
your decision was perfectly appropriate for the defense to claim that there's some due process process violation there is without any legal basis. The defense's objection is we don't like it, Judge. Well, there's lots of things that happened in court that I haven't liked, not in this court. <laughs> well, probably a few. Well, maybe with your honor in another case in South Side. <laughs> He's like right there. There's lots of things I don't like, but you know, Your Honor, there's not much we get to do about it. We're the state. So uh, the problem is Ann Taylor is going to sit there and look at this colloquy between the prosecution and the judge and go, but this is the problem I have. This is the problem I'm up against is that the two of you think that this is hilarious. And what I'm saying is the prosecution and the court are very friendly with one another. And then I'm getting paused in my work. And that's this is what she is worried about. It is the, it is this. We don't like it, Judge. Well, there's lots of things that happened in court that I haven't liked, not in this court. Well, probably a few. Well, maybe with your honor in another case in South Side. Um, that happens. That's part of the game. That's what's I'm not here. But just because somebody that. just because somebody complains doesn't mean that it's legally wrong. And there is no due process violation here. And Mr. Kenai is prepared to argue due process minutiae if that's what we want. But I don't think we need to deal with that. We are dealing with the issue of these questions in the survey. They are completely inappropriate. We have a group of at least 400 people in Lake Tahoe County who have been exposed to this in violation of the non-dissemination order. I think your honor is probably right. The only way we can deal with, or the best way to deal with that would be to exclude them from any prospective jury pool, but we sure as heck don't want to say to the defense's consultants, yes, go do this in other venues as well, right. where if we can't pick a jury here and we talk County, we have to go to, go ahead and mess with them too. Right. That's ridiculous. I do not question the right of the defense to commission surveys, responsible, proper surveys, as part of the debate over venue. But this survey cannot stand. If they are going to do that, they need to start from scratch if they want to compare it to Lake Talk County. And that's what the process is. There is no way to for. take the 400 responses that have been loaded with these factual representations in the form of questions. There's no way that that can fairly be compared to right. question, to surveys without those questions anywhere else. And the shit's out of the horse in those it's questions. Apples and horses. says are improper. And yes, it may be an expense and it may be a delay of time and it may be an inconvenience, but it is not of the state's making. True. It is entirely the responsibility and the fault of the agents of the defense. Entirely. We don't care if there's a survey. Now, I, I'll keep saying that because we keep hearing from the defense that we don't do surveys in Lake Talk County. That's not the issue. We know a survey is going to happen here. Now, when it comes to this idea of what happened two weeks ago, when we met with Ms. Taylor. We said, Ms. Taylor, you know, actually, I said, Ann, we gave her the information. We talked about it. She indicated she wasn't aware of the actual questions. We said, we are very concerned about this. This needs to stop. And the response, if I remember, was along the lines of, well, we think they're about done in Lake Talk County. And anyway, I said, well, we need to bring this to the court's attention. And she said, here's no. my proposal. She we said, will send a letter to Judge Judge she said, with these don't. attached, copy to you, and we can have a discussion. And I was told, no. Right. The defense did not want, Your Honor, to see this without also having whatever they wanted to offer in response to it as well. I said, well, that's not how it works. I mean, we'll file a motion. Normal law practice. I've been practicing for 43 years. I lose count now. You go, Santa. You know, if you can't resolve something, you file a motion with the court. I, I if there's things you want to base your motion on, you attach them to the motion, and we proceed from there. And so that's where we left it. Ms. Taylor did say, well, I could be available the following Friday, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday <laughs> or Friday, to, uh, to talk with Judge Judge. Uh, and to my mind, well, that's too little too late. As far as, as far as we know, these surveys are going on again right now. Right. Wrapping up or starting somewhere else, whatever. It needed to be addressed quickly, not wait a week 
to have a conversation and then go into a conversation where you're left cold. I agree. Walk in the door and we aren't able to provide you the basis for our concerns. So you are completely helpless with information. That's not how it works. That's not how informed decisions are made. So we prepared a motion. We attached, made the attachments. We filed it mid-afternoon, early mid-afternoon, not late in the day, yes. as it's characterized here. And I appreciate yeah. the yard didn't see it to later in the day. Right. Um, right. But that wasn't the intent. The intent was to Top get horn. it filed as quickly as we could. There was, there was no scheme to do some you know, five minutes to five o'clock filing and take some advantage of the fence. That's not the way we do business. That's not the way I do business. He's offended too. And frankly, it's a little offensive to have that suggestion made, Yeah, but I'm going to move beyond that. Yeah, he's offended too. That she would say that he was trying to slide I something have to say, past um, the judge. I am disappointed to learn today that Dr. Edelman and his associates um, made privy to the non-dissemination work. Um, but we can't undo that. And once again, that's not of the state's making. My knowledge, everybody that has been asked to take actions of any type on behalf of the state has been made aware of those restrictions because they are our agents. And we know we are responsible under the court's order for the actions of our agents. Regardless, I'm disappointed. Yep. I also want to be clear mm. that I'm not standing here today making a bar association ethical complaint against any member of the defense He team. didn't ask for sanctions. He didn't. Yes. He language asked in the non-dissemination order contains language that parrots the Idaho Rules of Professional Conduct. But the laundry list of things that the court lists, I think, are much more specific. And that's what we're concerned about. And... If I'm wrong and those are in the comments, well, then maybe there's a violation of that rule, but that's not my interest. I have no interest in doing His that. interest is in the questions. My interest is in taking care of this case, yeah. making sure that we can have a fair trial, making sure that your honor's non-dissemination order is honored. And at this point, trying to figure out a way to cure what has happened. The first thing to do is we have to say, your honor, Court needs to say, no, you will not ask any more questions of prospective jurors without the court approving it. Because we've seen that the people retained by the defense cannot be trusted in that regard. Ooh. Fools once, shame on us. Shame on you, fools fight, same on, shame on us. We don't want to get into that. Yeah, he's once bitten twice. They wish shy to receive the surveys? They can't, but they need to start over. Starting over in late talk, yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There's there's no other way to get a fair comparison with any other perspective veneer without re doing a new survey in Lake Talk County and not including any of the people who were surveyed in this 400 person group. That's the only way we can avoid this tank. Again, this is not of the state's making. We are trying to salvage a mess. The shit has uh, come out of the horse and hit the fan. As your honor noted, it's being smeared. There's no difference between heated mess. Talking, and I said just a little bit of talking one on one and issuing a press release or standing down in Friendship Square with a bullhorn. The dissemination is dissemination to a member of the public, and it's equally in violation of the no contact order or the non dissemination order. I'm also shocked that there's no one in court today. Do you think some some of those uh, 400? This is one of the more uh, consequential and interesting hearings that has happened in this case. And the courtroom is fairly empty. And I think that's because the court allows for Zoom court. But uh, somebody, see? People might have talked to other people, like their families. I know they have friends. I know they have, Judge. And I, the reason I know that is we got.
I'm going to back that up. He's like, don't you think people will talk to their family and friends about this happening? And that is the issue. It has ripples. As your honor noted, there's no difference between talking, and I said it's just a little bit of talking one on one and issuing a press release or standing down in Friendship Square with the bullhorn. The dissemination is dissemination to a member of the public, and it's equally in violation of the no contact order. Or the no yes, it is an emergency hearing, but I don't know. We knew what Tuesday when we were streaming because it was in the motions that there was going to be a hearing. So we knew um, that the hearing was coming as of, as of Tuesday. Dissemination we planned for it. Do you think some some of those uh, 400 people might have talked to other people, like their families? I know they have friends. I know they have, Judge. And I, the reason I know that is we got a call from the sheriff's office earlier today where a woman called uh, and said okay. that she had heard about this survey and the survey made her uncomfortable. And when they called her back, it actually was her son that had received the survey inquiries a couple of weeks ago and happened to mention it to her. Uh, and she just wanted the sheriff's office to know about that. I mean, we have good, responsible people in this county and they can sense what's right and what's wrong. They don't like it. They are, you ought to be a trained lawyer to know that it's not right to go out asking these kind of questions to people who might be prospective jurors in the case. It's just not right. So that's what. And I think Ann Taylor's argument on that, we'll see if it happens, is going to be, and isn't it interesting that instead of calling the defense and worrying about whether the defense is getting a fair trial, they called the police and the prosecution to say what is going on here. Um, but we'll see if she argues that. But people are just like, what is, why is anyone asking me questions about this case? Um, people are sensitive to it. What we need to do today, Judge? Um, I don't believe there's a due process issue. Matter of fact, I know there's no legal due process issue here. I appreciate Ms. Ms. Taylor isn't happy with the things ready to roll out. That's life sometimes. She's like, neither are we. But there's no due process issue here. Um, and we ask that your honor enter the order, cutting off any more use of this survey, directing that, um, that the defense, if they wish to continue with the survey, start Lynn, over. I agree with you and submit questions to the court to make sure that we aren't getting ourselves back into a similar situation, baiting people who may have no knowledge of this case, this is also detailed truly. information, and detailed information, some of which is completely false. And not only completely false, but it's false in a sense that makes Mr. Koberger look bad. It is would we be talking about the stalking, the allegations that he was stalking the victims? Would we be talking about that? Because it doesn't seem to be grounded in anything that's been in court documents. Um, and yeah, it doesn't make him look good. But if the purpose of the survey is to show that people are biased, isn't asking them, did you hear if Brian Koberger stalked his victims? Doesn't that maybe show that people are biased if they're like, yeah, I did hear that. Oh, I understand why Santa's pissed. Creating bias against Mr. Koberger to prove the point based that on false and or get inadmissible evidence. That's outrageous. To get what they want. How can we possibly preserve a jury pool when that's going on? We can't. It has to stop. Thanks, Judge. Your Honor, he said stop right now. Thank you very much. We're going to get to all of the other stop songs. In a minute, you guys, uh, we're getting towards the end of this hearing. This is kind of wild because the questions are more wild than I anticipated. Um, we will go over that again. I might back up to that part of the hearing and go through what those uh, questions were when we get to the end of this hearing and then talk about them. But that was absolutely wild. Also, for the uh, almost 14,000 of you in here, if you're new, um, I'm a lawyer. We do live court coverage. Do the YouTube things. Mr. Thompson, stay away. So not liking the result of a hearing or not liking an order from the court <sighs> is one thing. That happens all the time. I think courts probably have people on both sides of yeah, the aisle don't like whatever decision they make most of the time. Why they're so grumpy the most of the time. Well, and they're hungry. What I complained about 
was not being able to have a voice before a decision was made. I think that's an important distinction. I'm not saying don't make a decision I don't like or I'll file a motion against you. I'm not saying that at all. I imagine over the course of this case, there will be decisions I like and decisions I don't. It's the way it's been in the past. This was solely about being shut out of the process before a decision was made. I understand the order so I could have my day. Here's my day. So I want to make it clear it's that that motion didn't come because I didn't like the result. I didn't like the process. That was it. And she's made that very clear. My issue too. The (laughs) process. And I... I wanted to be heard about that. Um, he said, my issue is the process referring back to these surveys and the way that they're being done. He's like, you have an issue with the process to which I stopped these surveys and I have an issue with the surveys that you're doing. I do not think that these survey questions that related to what have you heard in the media injected information. What? I understand that this is a close community and I understand that people will call officers with concerns and the prosecutor with concerns. And that's kind of the point. That's kind of the thing that I'm worried about is the close knit nature of it. That's a good thing. Unless you are an outsider having a truck and then it's not a good thing. And that's, that is kind of a problem that we have with that. Well, I can, I can tell you from my own experience, people I see that there's plenty of people here who really don't like law enforcement that much. So I, I don't, I, I think it's always a, a mistake to stereotype people uh, or communities. Fair enough. Fair- judge, judge is like, actually, ma'am, I, uh, I do voir dire on, on the residents of Lataw County regularly. And in doing voir dire, if none of you have been uh, jurors, if you haven't been through that process, judges see a lot of residents of the counties. They know their attitudes. They know how they feel about things because they ask them about it day in and day out in voir dire. So he's like, actually, I think that that is a misconception. And I think stereotyping this small community is uh, not, not the way you want to go. And I think the residents of Lataw County that are looking at this being one of their elected officials might feel supported by that. Fair enough, Judge. Usually I don't find that people that have issues with law enforcement make their way to my juries, but yeah. that's probably something we'll talk about a different day. Sure. Um, as far as where we go from here, um, the, the moment of getting our work done and not having it out in public is over. So I suppose the court can weigh in on what we should do. I wouldn't be quick to say that we couldn't use the surveys that were done. Um, I would, if that's the route the court is gonna go to have us do other surveys, I mean, that's what we'll do if the court asks us to do that. But I'd ask the court to remember that it's quite common for the general questions to draw a no. And then you ask other questions because then people are like, well, yeah, I did know that. And that's how you get to the heart of the real information. So I I think there's got to be some give and take in there. I'll say two more things and then I'll be done. And I need a snack. Our office did send Dr. Edelman a copy of the non-dissemination order. I didn't know he didn't receive it, but he didn't receive it. He definitely knows about it now. I would have caught that. Uh, but we didn't send him anything. Our our process is to make sure that we have this the signed order back from anybody that we're going to communicate with about the case. This solely had to do with him looking oh, at yeah, what are the media stories, what are the big topics, so I can determine how saturated the community is and bias it. So that's why I didn't catch it. I'll take responsibility for that. Uh, but. Just but, maybe a lace on but Mr. Now you have disappointment. To fix it was it. sent. I, I, I don't know what happened. But, but now you have to fix it. Sure. Um, my other thing is if the court wants to change the survey, I would like an opportunity to speak with Dr. Edelman about the possibility of preserving what we've done versus just starting all over before. That was loud. I guess any more surveys went out if they're going to be changed. If the court will let us keep going with the way we're going, 
then we could make the comparisons from county to county. But if that's not what the court's going to do, I would like to see if there's a way to preserve what's been done by not looking at the questions that the court wouldn't want. Uh, us I don't to think you're going to get to preserve what's others. been done. And I don't know now. if that works, so I need to. Talk I don't know if that's going to yeah, work at all. That's what I'm kind of interested in. Oh my God! Did you hear the judges like, yeah, no, the like that's not that squirrel was aggressive. That's not exact li like a little a, li a literal one. That's not what he <laughs> the yeah no in his voice is hysterical. Look, at <laughs> judge judge is just very animated for a court officer. Oh, it's going to be interesting spending months with them for trial, won't it? Wouldn't want us to ask of other jurors, and I don't know if that works. So I need to talk to Doctor. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of interested in trying to figure out and you know, have to start all over um, how to how to approach this. Um, and I mean, I'll be candid. I mean, one of the things that I'm kind of concerned about is how much this costs taxpayers money, uh, and I have no idea. I'm not not. Part of the money, part of this, uh, but you know, if there's a way to kind of salvage something, he's like, fix I, it, I'm don't not, charge us. Uh, I'm not happy about these specific uh, questions, I'm especially ones that are false. Uh, then people people hear that, uh, and they just get uh, even worse, sort of. Uh, Depression, okay, because of COVID. Um, there are also cases that are, are questions that are very specific that are going to be major issues in the trial. And so I'm, I'm really worried about that. I wonder if he's talking about the DNA just because he's anticipating how much litigation is going to come up, but these questions are alluding to things that might not be proper evidence. Uh, for those yeah. in the chat asking who paid, the taxpayers would have paid uh, for these surveys to be completed by the expert. You know, this, the time, the passage of time has kind of calmed down you know, in terms of the media and very heavy. Initially, I have to say that to be here today, uh, but the uh, streaming has probably helped a little bit. Yes, it has. Uh, Thank so you. Kind of slowed things down. We love the streaming. Uh, intentionally, but uh, I think you know, people kind of move on a little bit. And then all of a sudden they get a phone call from a stranger uh, talking about particular issues uh, in COVID or case. And so it kind of fires it up again. Uh, that's that's uh, one of my worries also. It's a fair concern. Just the fact that you can say 400 people, but uh, 400 people in the town spread really interesting. So it does, it is the same issue. The same issue. And I'm no expert about it. And I, I don't know if, uh, I think you probably should, Mr. Edelman has been curious this whole hearing. So maybe a uh, discussion with him. Uh, yeah, let's hear what he has to say. discussion with each other. I mean, everything's kind of out, and, out in the open. We're already I'm gathered here grateful. today. I'm very grateful for that because I like to know to some degree what's happening in this case. Um, and let's just I didn't bring appropriate snacks, Your Honor. I forget that in afternoon streams, snackies are always needed. Um, but I appreciate that you want to do it quickly. But we're here for it. Let's go. Next week. Judge, I can be in, I plan to be in town on the 11th if the court wants a hearing. I I can make myself available. Your Honor, Karen Reed is going to try. We, sir, uh, next week, we're we're gonna be back in court on what? April eleventh. My kid literally texted me earlier today. He's like, "Hey, do we have anything for the afternoon of April 11th? And I was like, "No, I stream in the morning." Your Honor. <laughs> yeah, 
really any day next week. I already have plans for the 11th, but I can be available any other day the court wants. We're bringing so snacks next time. I'm going to be sitting with the Supreme Court in Nesco's uh, County. He also rides circuits, so he sits in different courts in different counties. So um, could you maybe have a hearing, short hearing of some kind, maybe on April 10th? Or, Donor, is that a Wednesday? Yeah, that's a Wednesday. Um, I, I will if that's the only time the court has we Wednesdays. Have a only live stream I Wednesday? have different things, but I can cancel them if that's the only time. If the court wants me to come back I'll Monday, I can. But we um, could, we could I do could, it. Three o'clock in the afternoon would be easiest for me on that day. I'm oh, we could do that. Three, I, I have a pre-court uh, meeting 2.30 to 3.30. I can do four o'clock, or if the court wants to do it at one, I I can make that happen four. Too. Hey, Judge, I'm con confused. What are we going to have a hearing on? Well, I want to <laughs> see um, what the prosecutor's like. Could this be an email? Like, didn't we have the hearing today? Like, what more do we need to discuss, Your Honor? I think what the well, Emily just keep reading. I think what the court wants to hear about is how to reformulate this survey. Thoughts you all have about dealing with the situation now, making sure that- What do we do from here? We can um, salvage currently or nothing. Do we do we scrap um, the entire survey? Ms. Uh, Taylor's gonna talk to Mr. Elman and maybe that'll give us some thoughts base. Otherwise, I mean, I could just make the decision right now, but I'm no expert about surveys. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. He wants more information. Um, so I don't know how you feel about four o'clock on April 10. Could we just do that by Zoom or do you want to be here? Your Honor, Zoom would be fine with me. Um, Mr. Koberger would likely not be present as late if to he's transport. present by Zoom, I will be here with him. So okay. I mean, well we, we can do it in person. But let's go ahead and do it in person. I'll I'll change my visiting day to Wednesday instead of Thursday. Okay. Is that okay? Thompson? Yes sir we we can be here um tenth or Bob. And you know uh Matt, Ms. Matt Massa or Mr. Nye or uh Ms. Dady can participate by Zoom. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Because um, I want to make the best decision I can, if that's possible. 4 p.m. Pacific time okay. on April um, 10th. I'm going to, let's talk um, again about, you know, having a hearing every, at least every month. It's just like keeping cleaning, cleaning up. Um, and also, I, I guess you just did have a, st a stipulation that you filed, um, but I have some. There it is. Yeah, um, that would be 4 p.m. Pacific time on April 10th, 7 p.m. Eastern. To temporarily seal. Goosebump, uh, they're not mountain it. time. He sets his schedule in Pacific time. So 7 p.m. EST. We also have a members only live stream that day. So we'll roll from the podcast premiere to the members only live stream. And then we'll roll to court in the evening. Um, maybe I'll bring snackies and whiskey. I mean, why why not? We'll all we'll all be here in the evening. One in the state's response to defendants 12. Uh, some supplemental request for discovery. And that's like right that, before the alibis do. That, that would be, the, uh, that would be covered by the stipulation yeah. that we filed today. Yeah. Okay. The, the goal with that, Your Honor, is we often want to file those attachments to discovery under seal. Um, it, those contain things that shouldn't be made public. We both agree. agree to it. And originally we were getting stipulations. And then I think we've done it so much, we just started doing orders. So the purpose of that is for us to just send along those and with an order for under seal knowing that i'm always going to stipulate to attachments to discovery responses to be under seal and the same 
with them. I mean, we know what we're asking. Okay, and I, I, I just, I mean, I agree about the perks too. Okay, so if you could just have a stipulation that says, with regard to discovery responses, uh, you can go ahead and see. It. Okay, I mean, as long as it's justified. Um, and that, that's the intent of what, what we submitted today, Your Honor, is, okay. is that um, attachments, discovery requests, and discovery responses, not to the, 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 not the cover document itself, but the attachments that have the details would just automatically be sealed when we're stipulating to that. So that would be routine. Okay, great. Um, so you backed off a little bit there, Taylor, Ms. Taylor, in that um, particular, you want everything, a hearing or, you know, everything needs to be stipulated. You that know. is a stipulation, Judge. Well, it is, it is, <laughs> okay. We also, I've judged- She's I believe, like, Your Honor, see, we can play nice when we want to. We have some other things on the motion to augment the record. Uh, yes. We've been gathering more information on that, and it's my fault that I dropped the ball last month and didn't get a second batch of information compiled to Ms. Taylor. She got that today. We are contemplating that we will be able to present the court with a stipulation on that issue as well, with certain emails and communications attached to it, and then also have an ongoing stipulation about off-the-record communications, email or letter communications involving the court. Excellent. So we're, we're making progress. We're, yes. we're working together on, on as Happy much as we can. Um, there was also a defendant's uh, motion requesting additional deadline. The court is like, while I have you all here, we have some, he is going through the outstanding motions that they have not resolved yet. And he's like, well, if we are setting times to talk and if we need to talk, if we just need to have a standing monthly meeting to figure out what hasn't been resolved, if that's what's going to move this case along, he's like, then let's like, let's zoom, zoom. If that's a monthly meeting, like, hey, we'll, we'll hash out anything that comes up this month. Great. Let's just put it on the books. So he's trying to facilitate them moving along faster. Um, and he's like, so while we're here, let's, let's continue moving along. That was filed on March 6th. We didn't ask for here. For here. You are, I haven't asked for a hearing. I know the state filed an objection to that, and I we don't have a hearing on that yet. My thought would be that after we submit everything on our motion for venue change, when the court's ready to make a decision on that, I think that's when we'd probably call for a hearing on our own motion, and probably the state would want to be heard at the same time on their objection. Okay, so that can just hang out there for a while. I think so. Float, it, float around. Um, now we got state's motion to unseal state's motion for order of prohibiting contact with pros, uh, the prospective jurors absent leave of. Which is relates to what we've been talking about today, Judge. Yes, we had filed our original motion under seal. Um, the initial response from the... Oh, I very much want to know what the court's going to do with this. The prosecution is talking about the prosecution's motion to unseal their original motion, but they've also made very clear that they want to keep the exhibits sealed, which is like, can we just... We know what the questions are now, so maybe we don't need to worry about it too much, but he's like, Your Honor, the defense filed everything not under seal, so we need the full context, so unseal our motion. Defense was under seal that said we object, and then the uh, defense's memorandum with the attached affidavit was not filed under seal. So our position was that in fairness to the public record, that our motion should be unsealed and just keep the attachment sealed. The public record the concurs. Of people who were interviewed by law enforcement or contact. The public record concurs. Um, and that is where our hearing cut off because the court's YouTube channel did not populate it quickly. We're going to zoom zoom to the end of the hearing from another outlet because, you know, there's always a backup of a backup. So we're going to do that real quick just to see the last um, like less than two or three minutes of the hearing. So let's go grab that, that elsewhere um, real quick. So I think it's the last uh maybe two or three minutes so we're gonna do that as we switch feeds real quick um let's see so can i get if we can i think that should pick us up right 
where we need to be. I'm going to boost the volume a little bit. We're going to zoom, zoom. Now's a perfect time to go ahead and uh, take a second to do the YouTube things, the likey, subscribey things. We have lots of live trial coverage coming up. If you like court with explanations, then, um, then that is for you. Let's get back to court. File exhibit and attached to defendants 14. Oh, let me go back a little bit. Mm, there are a few more. Let's see. That's not exactly where we were. I got that for a while. I think so. Okay. Um, now we got state's motion to unseal. There we state's go. State's motion for order of prohibiting contact with pros uh, the prospective jurors absent leave of which is relates to what we've been talking about today, Judge. Yes, we had filed our original motion under seal. Um, the initial response from the defense was under seal that said we object. And then the uh, defense's memorandum with the attached affidavit was not filed under seal. So our position was that in fairness to the public record, that our motion should be unsealed and just keep the attachment sealed to protect the identity of the people who were interviewed by law enforcement or contacted law enforcement about about being subject. I don't know why the quality is so survey. bad. Any objections, Ms. Taylor? Sorry, y'all. In large part, no. Um, there is a sentence in there. I don't know why the quality the is so talks bad. About uh, we can hear the hearing pretty well, but I do not know why uh, the quality of this feed is so bad. I think it looked a little bit better, but um, I I don't know evidence they plan to present and that would seem like something they may want redacted before it became in the public record our response didn't have anything like that i can show mr thompson later so in case he wants to prepare a redacted one for the court well, you know what she's talking about? I, I don't but we can talk about it, judge and miss taylor just can just show us or send us what the language is i'm sure we can work it out okay and so, and I guess this uh, we are already uh, covered by this. Now everybody wants to play nice. Defendant's motion to file exhibit M attached to defendant's 14 under seal supplemental right. request for discovery. That would be covered by today's stipulation. Okay. okay. Whoo! Um, Also, I love the way that Judge Judge, and you can kind of see it from the way he prepares, that he has a running list of like what's been filed with highlights of what hasn't been addressed and ad addressed addressed yet and notes and what have you. Uh, he organizes things very much the way I organize things, which is always kind of fun to see when you get little glimpses of how um, he's organizing his own docket for what's been covered and what hasn't been covered. And you get just little glimpses of that from his desk from the way that he's working through his own notes. I thought you were going to start talking, JJ. Like I, I thought that's why I paused, but um, he's looking at his notes. So okay, I think I've had my speech. So thank you. If any, so we don't, we don't need to uh, hear from Mr. Nye or Mr. Edelman at this point. I don't believe so. I think that it may be more prudent. Selfishly, I want to, but if we're if we're back here next week um, and doing that, then we're back here next week. For Ms. Taylor and Mr. Edelman to talk between themselves first, and I believe the due process issue that Mr. Nye was prepared to discuss has been resolved. The court, I, the I court, have no doubt that I did not violate due process uh, rights. Yes, sir, of Mr. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Are you going to make um, a? Are you going to rule okay. on the motion? Anything else, Ms. Taylor? Can you rule for the record? Can okay. you just? Great. We are great. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. It's like great. Uh, can you just rule for the record, Your Honor? Because you threw it oh, in there in the middle of a bunch of shit, Your Honor. Your Honor, you just kind of mushed it in the middle. All right, fine. I'll just I'll just summarize, I guess. We'll just we'll just summarize it. <laughs> just and that's exactly when the court, the second court is done, they cut their fee to make it private. It is, it is a very interesting way to do it. So we will be back here April 10th. Let me summarize real quick uh what just happened, and then we'll get to your questions. 
because there is nothing more in court this fine day. Uh, as Judge Newman would say, that is enough work for today. But we're I'm going to summarize what I'm repeating myself. I'm as I'm collecting my thoughts, I'm going to summarize what the court just did, what's coming up next. And then we're going to get to your questions. So um, let's do that. After a hearing of about an hour and 20 minutes, the court has set another date to figure out how to reformulate the survey and if that is possible to talk to the defense's expert and figure out if any of the survey can be salvaged because it's clear that the court has issues with the questions that were asked and the prosecutor read those questions into the record and they were very pointed, including, have you heard that Briar, Brian... Have you heard that Brian Koberger stalked one of the victims? Have you heard that Brian Koberger followed one of the victims on social media? Have you heard that Brian Koberger's DNA was on a knife sheath and others? And I think what we will do in a minute is go back and look at those questions for everybody who's come in midway through the hearing. The court also took up the issue of whether he violated the due process rights of the defendant by not giving them an opportunity to be heard before he made the temporary order to pause the survey. The court found that he did not. The prosecution also strongly argued he did not. And Taylor, for the most part, argued with the court and then let it go because the court is not withdrawing that order. The survey that the defense was conducting in Lataw County was complete. The survey as to other counties has not proceeded. Interestingly, what we learned is that Ann Taylor says that she did not review the questions that were being sent out, but knew that potential jurors would be surveyed to show if a change of venue motion is necessary. The prosecution said very clearly, we knew that a survey was anticipated or would be needed at some point, but we did not know that these particular questions, which go to specific information and in some cases, false information would be directly and specifically asked of potential jurors. And the prosecution said, we might need a new survey if you're going to survey multiple jurisdictions. And we might need the information of the 400 people that were already surveyed so that they can be excluded from the jury role if this trial stays in Lataw County. The prosecution was noticeably frustrated when arguing about this. The judge and judge judges normally fairly affable and calm and, and enjoys these attorneys. Judge judge was very frustrated with the accusation that he had somehow violated the defendant's due process rights by exercising his emergency powers to pause what was happening for a matter of two weeks when there is plenty of time for this motion for change of venue to be heard and a trial date that's not even been set and is anticipated sometime in the summer of 2025. The judge was deeply offended by that insinuation and made that very clear to the defense attorney Ann Taylor. So it will be uh, it will be interesting to see where we get from here. This court will be back in session on April 11th. 10th. <laughs> this court will be back in session on April 10th at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'll be covering that. The judge wants to question the defense's expert to see if there's anything salvageable in this survey or if they need to scrap it, do a new survey in Lataw County, and then survey the surrounding counties, including something in the uh, more southern area of Idaho. And then, of course, um, the county where Boise sits. So we will see what the judge does next week. We will have more formal rulings on the record probably tomorrow or the next day, um, lining out everything we just talked about. But the judge denied essentially, or will be denying the defense's motion to um, the defense's motion to withdraw the court's order for lack of due process, and the court will. Um, take up the issue of what questions should be on that survey next week. So for now, the temporary order that I covered on Tuesday stands, 
And as it is, there is no surveying or should not be any surveying happening until the court um, rescinds that order, likely after the hearing on April 10th. Let's get to your questions. George. Jo I bet you George is hungry. George is like, ma'am, it's like 5.45. Uh, it's time for dinner. So why are you still sitting in a chair streaming? George, it's just... We've got the lawners have questions, George. We need we need to answer questions, bud. I mean, I I get it. I'm hungry too. Um, Aaron M said, "Any chance you'll cover Sebastian Rogers's case if when we find out what happened?" I don't even know what that case is, so I. Can't answer. I don't know. Um, Aaron M said, I hate that my super chat grammar was so bad. It's okay. We know that there's a glitch in the super chats. I understood your super chat, Aaron, and I don't know. Um, I I don't, I don't know. What? Fred, you too? Uh, the the cats are are like it's dinner time. Why are we still streaming? Um, so there, there is that. Um, but Aaron, I don't know that case, so I apologize. Lucy said, have you lived under a rock? And I think Lucy is talking about any potential jurors that might not have seen this. Look, even in um, Depp v. Heard, which was a case of intense public interest, there were jurors who like, I I'm not paying attention to this. So they will be able to find jurors who, even if they've heard of it, have been like, I mean, I heard about it, but it's like, I, I just don't care. And um, it's, it's interesting when it's, a subject matter that we're very interested in that we're like, Oh my God, this is happening. Other people are like, what? So let's see. How did they find the Daphne? I'm not quite sure what we're talking about. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> DJ said my mouth refuses to close. Help me DB. Um, I was, I was um, definitely a, a bit, a dumbstruck for a lot of that hearing. So I understand I was, um, we learned, we learned a lot. We learned, Oh, chat. I, um, I, yellow pills, like I haven't heard half these things. I meant to go back and cover, um, a little bit of the questions that were asked. Hold on. We're going to, I, I forgot. I said I was gonna, and then, uh, I didn't. So apologies. I got sidetracked. I was ready to get to questions and, but I really do want to get back to, um, what the, prosecutor read out in the questions. So give me one, uh, indulge me one moment while we find that part of the stream from well, earlier. I think we're actually almost right on target with that. So uh, I want to hear that again. And then Miguelina, I think when we do a summary of the case, it would be helpful to include um, the prosecutor reading this these questions because for those that want to just catch up on what happened here. I think we need, I think we need those. So let's see. I think we're just about there. Yes. Uh, and Ms. Taylor represented to us, uh, and I do not dispute this, but that's why I want to make this part of the record, that she had not seen the actual questions themselves. All right, let's, we need to get to him picking up his paper and reading the questions. Calls, as your honor will recall, um, we had a person come to us who had received one of these calls actually reported the call one seventeen, and so our office prepared a transcript and that was attached uh, as exhibit d i believe to our motion for order prohibiting contact in addition to generic questions about the criminal justice system here's where we get to things that concern the state immensely chat i'm going to want to know when we get to the end of these questions if these questions concern you as well so um oh Bubbles, this is a great idea. Could we conduct our own survey poll with the same questions? We can. I mean, there's eleven over 11,000 of you here. Let's go to question number one, and you guys can do one for yes, two for no in the chat. We'll take an impor informal chat poll, um, but I'm not going to poll each and every question because we will be here for another hour. Let's see what question one is. Question. Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger was arrested as parents' home in Pennsylvania? Have you seen, read, or heard that Brian Koberger was arrested at his parents' home in Pennsylvania? One for yes, two for no. 
chat is like one. <laughs> one, 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 one. I see you, chat. Lots of ones. Lots and lots of ones. A few twos. I see a handful of twos, but a lot of ones. All right. Next question. Question. Have you read, seen, or heard if police found a knife sheath on the bed next to one of the victims? Have you read, seen, or heard that the police found a knife sheath on the bed next to one of the victims? One for yes, two for no. Chat, let it roll. A few more twos on this one. A lot of ones, but a few more twos on this one than the last one. Um, which is which is interesting, but a few more twos on this. Uh, okay, let's continue to the next question. Question. Have you read, seen, or heard that DNA found on the night sheet was later matched to Brian Coburg? Have you seen, read, or heard that the DNA on the knife sheath matched Brian Koberg or one for yes, two for no. Um, I think quite a number have heard that. I'm seeing a few twos though. A few of you are like, I actually hadn't heard that. But interesting, for those of you that hadn't heard, heard that Brian Koberger's DNA matched the DNA on the knife sheath, if that were true, would it change your opinion on this case? All right, let's continue. Question. Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger owned the same type of car reported on video driving in the neighborhood where the killings occurred? Seen, read, or heard? Car matched the car in the neighborhood. One for yes, two for no. I also realize we are a skewed sample because we are a sample of people that are following this case. So I understand that we are also a skewed sampling, but I also know that for a lot of the Lawnards, if you don't if you're even if you're following me and following this case, there are things you might not have heard, might not have known, or we might not have covered, especially if they're not in the court documents. I in this coverage, I only cover what's in the court documents. So if they're not in the court documents, we wouldn't have covered it. But that doesn't mean y'all haven't gone down your rabbit holes, but you're not the jury. But a lot of you have heard that one particularly about the car seem to be the one that are all ones. Have you seen, read, seen, or heard? If the cell phone tower data showed that Brian Koberger made several trips near the victim's home in the month before the kill. Cell phone shows Brian Koberger in the area the month before the killing, one and two. That was in the affidavit, the probable cause affidavit. Um, a few more twos on that one, but still, again, we are a skewed sampling, but a few more twos on that one. Have you read, seen, or heard? If the university students in Moscow and their parents lived in fear until Brian Koberger was arrested for the murders. Have you heard that the parents and students were living in fear until Koberger was arrested? That's going to be media reporting. More twos on that. That's going to be media reporting, not really court document reporting. So I see a lot more. I actually see a lot more twos in the chat on that. That's going to be coming, I think, more from local reporting. The first grouping of questions seemed to, well, they all came from reporting, but the first grouping of questions were things directly in that affidavit. This is this is other more general reporting, not based on court documents, um, but it's not, I mean, it's not like I don't understand that that can happen. Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger said that he was out driving alone on the night of the murders? Koberger said he was, he, he wears his sunglasses at night while he drives in his car late at night. Um, had you seen, read, or heard that, that was in the alibi that the defense promulgated last time. A lot of ones on that. A few twos, but a lot of ones on that one. All right, next one. Next page. Have you read, seen, or heard that Brian Koberger stalked one of the victims? That Koberger stalked one of the victims. Um, one for yes, two for no in the chat. I was joking about the sunglasses chat. Don't, I was joking. It was just the driving by himself at night. Um, I was, I was making a joke. Sorry. That's, that's on me. Bad surveyor. Uh, more twos on this one. Again, this does not come from court documents. This comes from, uh, more of the online sphere is my understanding of where that's, uh, where the origin lies on that. That's not come from any court documents that we've covered. So more twos on, much more twos on that one. 
Um, he's alleged to have stalked one of the victims. No, he's not alleged to have stalked one of the victims. Responding to the chat, the question was, have you heard, read, or seen that Brian Koberger stalked one of the victims? Um, that is not from court documents. So that is being asked because it has been in the media elsewhere. So that's why they asked it. But um, they're asking, have you heard it? More twos on that one. Have you read, seen, or heard if Brian Koberger had followed one of the victims on social media? So did you did you hear that Brian Koberger had followed one of the victims on social media? Again, ones for yes, you have, two for no, you haven't. It does not mean that it's true. These are the survey questions trying to ascertain what a potential jury pool may or may not know or have heard about the case. A lot of twos on that one. Like a lot of twos on that one. Some that I think has the most twos of anything that we've seen. Um, but again, that was rumors. Your Honor, there is absolutely no question. And those are the ends of the question. So the last two, um, a few of those were not found in any court documents and were rumors, but it doesn't mean that those rumors weren't reported on and that when those rumors were reported on that it could impact the jury pool. I think what the prosecution was so mad about is when rumors are reported on and then asked in the survey, it becomes a greater problem because if you if you see it on social media, it's one thing. But if you're like, oh my God, somebody like called and asked me about this, it can feel like it has more credibility than if you just hear it and somebody's saying, oh, it's being said or speculated about that this happened. It's it's just different. So um, it's really interesting to see what's happening. Um, Rob Lawn Lumber, good to see you in the chat. These questions, right? I know. They, uh, they are definitely not just ascertaining what the jury, if they'd heard about the case, these questions are tremendously uh, pointed and feels like it is stating perhaps fact. Because the question is, have you, literally the way they're reading it to the person they're surveying is, have you read, seen, or heard that Brian Koberger stalked one of the victims? Like, how does that impact you if you hadn't heard that? You're like, oh shit, really? Like, what's the impact? If you had never heard that, again, we know that this is speculation, but you're on the other end of the phone. Is your initial response like, fuck, really? Like, I didn't know that, but like, wow, that's not good. Because there's nothing in the survey that says, hey, that's not verified. That's not in court documents. That's not an allegation. That's a rumor. Um, so with all of that, let's get back from um, let's get back to to the rest of to the rest of the questions. But Chad, it's it's good to take a unofficial, unofficial poll um with the with the chat and see what you guys think. But it it those questions were special. Oh, my computer is like, hey girl, hey, what we're not gonna do is um work in a swift fashion. What can I close? What other tabs in my computer or my brain are open that I can close to make this go a little bit faster? All right, there we go. Let's get back to let's get back to our Q&A. Princess said, EDB, let's play a drinking game. We take a shot every time you put on your lip gloss or take a drink from the water. Dumbler, no. No, I don't want to, I don't want to encourage that level of debauchery. You guys can, you guys can decide on yourself, but uh yeah, it's something I do a lot depending on how long the stream is. Um, Wine Yogi said, I'm mad for him. For for Santa, Santa was pissed. Judge Judge was pissed. Uh, Goose Goose Toots says that shit is so far out of the horse. It's been processed, diluted, and is on my lawn right now as fertilizer. That the shit's out of the her horse, and it's become something else. Judge Judge is about to throw down. He definitely did. Judge Judge was a uh, big big mad at the accusations being levied against him. Um, Kate says JJ is big mad. He's very disappointed in Ann Taylor. He did not like, he did not like the, um, representation that he, or the insinuation or the question that he may have violated the defendant's due process rights. Cause it is something that he takes very seriously. And when you care about a thing and then are accused of doing the opposite of that thing, it tends to ruffle, ruffle the feathers, um, especially 
in the area of integrity in the law. So I can see why he's ruffled. Anna said, Your Honor, you prevented me from prejudicing the whole state. <laughs> I don't know if Ann Taylor sees it that way, but those questions, man, I don't, those questions were tough. Amanda says, today is my beautiful niece, Emily's 17th birthday. Well, happy birthday to your niece, Emily. Enjoy, enjoy, you know, the life before adulting. Adulting is kind of, um, it's a lie, like the cake. The cake is a lie. Adulting is a lie. Adulting can be kind of bullshit. So um, enjoy year 17. Um, Chevy said, let's go make some popcorn for this. I really should have. Um, really, 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 really should have. Uh, Lucy, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. Angela, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. That's incredibly kind. Didi said, question, if the information in the survey was only stuff that is already out in the public domain, what's the issue? Like, what's the substantive effect? It is directly questioning individuals about information they might not have seen. So when there are vaguer questions, it is, what have you heard, seen, or know about this case? Or do you, do you watch a lot of information about this case? Do you not watch a lot of information about this case? These specific questions might give information to people who didn't know that information and some of that information is wrong. But the bigger problem is that it violates the non-dissemination order. The non-dissemination order being that the lawyers or their agents can't talk about what may be evidence in the case. And those questions were very uh, pointed. But also, if you have bad questions, you're going to get bad answers and bad results. And if the goal of this survey is to find bias, which is what the defense is arguing exists, then will those questions aid in that endeavor? It Does it become a less open endeavor? We're going to hear from the... Um, the defense expert on how to uh, how he crafted those questions. Um, we're going to hear next week about why he believes the questions needed to be crafted this way. And, and the fact that if you ask open-ended, like, have you heard about this case? Some people are like, yeah, I heard about the, the case, but I don't really know much specifics. But then if you're like, well, did you hear this thing? Then you can really dial down into how much they know. So the defense is arguing that this is what's necessary. The prosecution is arguing this is, a problem. And the judge is like, I need more information. And that's why we're back here next week. But the defense's argument is this has to move out of Laytaw County. This county's too small. And we can't do it. Lawn Lumber said, can we at least get some appreciation for Taylor doing her job and not backing down? I agree with the shot, but it's a tough place to be in. And she's standing up in the face of a lot of heat. Yeah. She, she said, I take responsibility for that, but I knew they were going to survey. I didn't know how, but it might've been an oversight that they didn't get the non-dissemination order. Um, but also there's, I mean, there's not a lot the judge can do to rectify it, except throw out the survey or the people that were surveyed, remove them from the jury role. There's not much else the defense can do to the, the judge can do to fix it. And there's not much the prosecution can do to fix it. So Anne's like, you know, I don't have to ask the prosecution for permission to f do my fucking job. Like this is what we're going to do it. Art by Julie E said, Emily, question, would you ever consider being a judge? No, no, Julie, no. I mean, maybe on the internet, a la Judge Judy, but like IRL, no, no. No, I have friends that are judges. Um, I, I like reacting. I love reacting. Uh, my face would make me a bad judge. My face is... Um, expressive and i i the energy it takes me not just to deal with being neurodivergent but the energy that it takes me to control my face is a like is a lot so um uh that would not be maybe the best use of my skill set so i love doing this um but oh gosh i'll i'll, I'll be a fake judge i i will be a, a judge judy tv judge but i will i know no. And it is, it is so much like it is, it is quite a lot. And, and I would imagine that being a judge in like traffic court for the first five years of my judge career would uh, destroy my soul. Like it's just really because judge Judy judging, you can say what you're thinking, like judge judging, there's a lot of restraint involved, like a lot. And, um, I've already uncorked the fact that I don't have that restraint anymore. Like, well, I was still at the DA's office. There, there was still, there was most of the time, 
I was still able to control my face. Occasionally, not so much. O occasionally, I could not control my face. Um, but that is a bigger problem if you are the judge. And I have, um, I have kind of unwound that now. Like, we live here. So I, I don't think there's, again, I don't think there's any putting any shit back in the horse. Like, I don't, I don't think we can, I don't think we can go back. I don't think we can go back to that. I just, uh, I don't think we could get back to that. <laughs> I like doing this. I like doing this a lot. Also, if I were a judge, I'd have to like leave my house real early in the morning and like, like be in court on time and stuff. Like, no. Casey Katz said, standing ovation for Santa. I also really liked being an advocate. Like, I never really wanted to be a referee. Even when it was like, hey, do you want to referee the, like the alumni water polo game? I'm like, I don't want to be the referee. I want to, I want to, you know, get in the pool, throw some elbows. And that's how I felt about doing, um, doing trial as well. Like, I'm ready to get in the pool and throw some elbows. I don't want to, I don't want to ref. Like, even when I did it once in a while, I was like, nah, I don't, this isn't, uh, this isn't for me. I, I rather commentate. And I, same with water polo. I would rather sit and run commentary on what people are doing in the pool than refing the game. But I will run commentary on just about everything from Vanderpump Rules to how my husband is cooking dinner. Um, my family's delighted by it. It's just how my brain works all the time. Even when we're at the movies, I'm like, wow, that person's chewing popcorn super loud. That's interesting. That's a date that looks like it's not going well. Huh. Um, this is an interesting choice for a, a family movie this evening. I, my, this is like, my brain is constantly running commentary anyway. So Renee said, I'm, a, I'm 30 behind watching and literally arguing with the judge, the fucking audacity. She was, uh, she, she was getting into it with the judge today for sure. Can Brian Koberger fire his lawyer without adding more time to getting ready for trial? Nope. And Bonnie, I don't think Brian Koberger wants to fire his attorney. I, imagine that he would feel supported by the zealous nature of his lawyer's advocacy. Um, Mannix says when the prosecution is stating something that the defense has done is making the defendant look bad. That's, um, bad. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. the thing is when you're the prosecutor, you don't have a remedy for any of this stuff, which is why the prosecutor was like, we have to pause this until we have a conversation because there's no remedy for the prosecution once it's done. The defendant has substantially more remedies uh, than the prosecution does. I saw the question in the chat uh, from Sylvia. Have you watched Vanderpump Villa? Not yet. I'm still behind on uh, VPR because I decided that I needed to rewatch. I'm I'm hating myself a little for this decision, but I decided I needed to rewatch some of Dance Moms because it occurred to me that I had stopped watching Dance Moms um, before Abby Lee Miller got indicted and then went to prison. And so I now doing this wanted to go back and rewatch how that played out on the show. I don't know what brought it up in my, I don't know what brought it up in my brain. It might've been uh, Jojo Siwa being on uh, special forces, but I was like, oh, I wonder how that played out on the show. So I went back to go watch what happened when the indictment went down while the show was filming and before she um, went to prison. She's already out of prison now. <laughs> this, this happened, oh gosh. Hey Siri, what year did Abby Lee Miller go to prison? Abby Lee Miller was sentenced to one year and a day in prison in 2017. 2017. This is from thinkingdulcinea.com. Thank, more, thank you. Thank you. Cancel. <laughs> if I if I activated any of your devices, I apologize. That's literally how I live uh, most of my life is by asking questions like that. So uh, 2017, 27, 2017. And if I triggered your devices, I am so sorry. And if I triggered you to rewatch Dance Moms, I'm so sorry. It's really hard to watch back to TV in the like. 2014 15 16 range like it's it's really really strange to watch it back i um it's really shocking sometimes to see the amount of these women calling each other um fat talking about each other's bodies like the it's it, there are moments i'm like 
what are we doing? Like 2024, Emily, looking back at 2015 uh, TV is always an interesting experience. So like if you go to rewatch Vanderpump, you're going to look at stuff at the beginning of Vanderpump Rules and be like, y'all said that to each other. In interesting. Lacey said, anyone else really like this judge? I appreciate his calm reactions, despite the fact that he is evidently pissed. I like Judge Judge's demeanor. He's he's um he's he's more animated than a lot of judges that we've watched. And I really, I really enjoy uh his demeanor. I would imagine practicing in front of him at times could feel like he's very hands-on in your case. I wonder if he is a judge that will jump in and ask ask questions of witnesses when he wants to. I'm curious to see how that plays out when this case goes to trial because he's very, very involved. And sometimes that's great. And sometimes that's like, uh, your honor, actually, um, I have a plan for how this is going to go. So could you just could, like, I'm, I'm building a narrative, your honor. Could you just, I know you have questions, but could you wait? Could you wait? Um, Franny said you should get a mini fridge and put your snackies and beverages in it. I mean, I, my kitchen is not far away from my office, but um, also I don't want to hear a refrigerator in my office because I have not found a quiet mini fridge. <laughs> Patty said for the peanut butter whiskey fund, I mean, we almost are getting into root beer whiskey time. So yes. And thank you. A Beldy said no interviewing litigants, but anyone else thinking EDB should interview Leah Remini would be the best thing on YouTube. Um, Down the road, always open to doing that would love to let the case finish uh, before any of that. Mike said, as a former prosecutor, doesn't the state have a lot more money for a case and that money comes from the taxpayer also? Generally, no, because the, the public defender's office also has access to resources. It, it becomes apparent in a case like Hannah Gutierrez-Reed when she is not tapping into the resources of the public defender's office and working with a... Um, a, a private attorney, you're now paying for those resources and you see that disparity a little bit more in a case like that. But the public defender's office also has taxpayer resources. So um, no, I don't think the, the, the defense attorneys may very well disagree with me, but I think the pros, the defense is able to tap into those resources um, as well. There, there is a squirrel gripping for dear life. Um, to, trying to climb the bird feeder. Uh, RJ said, definitely no bias here. Oh yeah, the, the what well, we didn't ask if there was bias, we asked if there was awareness. So we only really asked the chat, had you heard these things? But this chat isn't gonna be on the jury. They're very tuned into the case. They might not have made up their mind yet. They're like, I mean, that doesn't look good, but I wanna hear the rest of the evidence. The chat is wise. Lisa BS says, I feel the questions could have been more open. What if any... What, if any, did you hear about DNA arrest movement? I would be interested to see if we could uh, reframe it. And most of my um, most of my bird feeders are squirrel busters, but I also have a cage that has a little bit of a, a brick in it for the blue jay, and the blue jay and the squirrel can fight it out. It's fine. Um, I mean, if the squirrel's able to do it, I'm like, well, buddy, it's, you know, it's fine. Question, do you really think BK would honestly get a fair trial in that county? I don't know the county. So it's it's not it's not for me to say. Um, because I I don't know the county that well. I don't know how how connected, like the interconnectedness of the county. So I don't know how tied the community feels to the university. So it's hard for me to answer. Um, I'll be interested to see what the defense puts forward. Thank you for the gifted memberships, Nana Banana Nine. Appreciate it. And Bell said, moot court over silly cases with Robin and each of you takes a turn as judge. I There are so many things that would be fun that I would love to do. And then I look at our trial schedule through the end of the summer and I'm like, oh, when do we have time? BC said, do we know how many surveys went out? 400. Is this an intentional attempt to force venue change by eliminating potential jurors who received it? I mean, it it is an attempt to force a venue change because it's they are looking at... Um, they are looking to prove that the county's not a proper venue, but I don't think I'm not attributing malicious defense, malicious intent to the defense in the way that the survey was done by who they hired to do it. Cause I don't think we have evidence of that. I don't love the way that it looks, but I'm, 
not going to attribute like malicious intent to that. They are trying to prove that this is the wrong venue. Um, but I, I think they run afoul of trying to create that circumstance. Um, which is interesting. K and J travel said, I got electronic jury summon questionnaire. Will lawyers get it? Yes. I got a call back from questionnaire to report. Um, the lawyers in the court do get those. Ashley King said, how did your conversation with CrimeCon go? Really, really interesting and really well. So I will keep you guys posted on what, if anything, comes out of that. But as I said, I am here in Nashville. We will be doing a lottery meetup around the same time. Um, CrimeCon has some really interesting things going on this year. So I, I was happy to learn more about it. I was very happy to learn more about the ethics behind the intent of the event, um, which is shining a light on on those who are impacted by uh, crime and high-profile cases. And I, I thought that was a, a very interesting um, and very aligned um, goal as to not exploit things that happen, but to shine a light on things that are happening in a non-exploitative way. And so it was, it was a really, really nice conversation to have. Uh, Jay Bell said, OMG, thank you. I'm not alone. I have been counseled on my face at work. <laughs> they make assumptions and don't get it. LOL, leave me alone and let me process. And it can be very hard, particularly, I think, for those of us who are who are um, neurospicy in different ways. When your brain is processing, you you don't even always have awareness um, of what your face is, is doing. And it can be difficult enough to process especially with what else is going on. Like I am particularly sensitive uh, to overhead lights and um, like fluorescent lighting. And so when I would be in court for very long days, I am already dealing with the, the light that is not working for me. I am processing a lot of information coming in, but I can also hear them like cleaning the hallway outside of the courtroom. And my brain is like, why are they making so much noise? Why is this loud? Why can't they do this after court is over? I'm like, why do you, what, what are you doing that is so loud? Like, it, so I'm already filtering all that information to also filter my face can be uh, challenging. <laughs> Sleepy Vapor, who I imagine is a anesthesiologist of sorts, I am quite sure they will not be moving this trial to Lonardville after this survey. No, the trial is not for the court of public opinion. Um, so Nana Banana 9 said, uh, Aaron from Growing Up Scientology said he'd love to talk with you about your experience with Scientology. I don't know how much of that I will share on the internet while I am covering that case. Um, so I'm going to leave that there. Creekside Casual said this survey is basically patient zero of an epidemiology model. Uh, fair, fair observation. Kat Lewis said, Emily, was it established whether she was allowed to send the surveys with uh, quarter prosecutor's approval? Yes, no one had a problem with that. And as we talked a bit about at the beginning of stream, um, the prosecution never argued like they can't survey the prosecution argued they can't ask these questions in light of the non-dissemination order. And they that was always um, always kind of their argument. I was just curious as to what the procedure was there. And when we got to the replies today, the prosecution never said this violates this court rule, this local rule, or anything like that. They always said, we believe that the questions in the survey violate the non-dissemination order. And now we've looked at the um we've looked at it and that's what it is and i see um small small x rune in the chat saying as a housekeeper we're sorry for our loud noises no it's not it's it's not it's not y'all i am particularly distracted by sound so it could be somebody pushing a stroller with a wheel uh, a squeaky wheel outside of the courtroom and it would i am i my flavor of adhd is highly noise distracted i was sitting in the bar exam with like headphone like noise canceling um uh in ears in and i could still hear people like sniffing and opening their water and like clicking their pens and and their face like it uh sometimes it's very hard to uh <laughs> to tune out the noises that distract the adhd brain i don't know if i answered that i'll get back to that question i don't know if i moved on um Lugsburgs, yes, the taint. The taint was injected with the questions. 
Maya said, what is the difference between a declaration, a motion, a letter, et cetera? There seems to be so many ways to contact the court and judge. The, the letter to the court is not really asking for action, The depending on the jurisdiction. Different in like New York where they do letter filing, a motion is generally asking for process. Like, Your Honor, we're asking you for this. The other side can oppose and then we can reply. And a declaration is in support of something saying, hey, you need more information and I'm giving you this information. It is an affidavit of sorts in the declaration saying this thing is true and this is why it is facts. Um, Linda P., do you think that the survey could actually prejudice the jury pool in a way that would increase the possibility of a change of venue would have to be granted? I mean, I don't know how they will account for that because they only have the people that they surveyed. They can't then meet the ripple effect of it until they start picking a veneer. But is it possible? Yes. Anything is possible. Hey, y'all, judge is saying, if you two can't play nice, then I will have to supervise your play dates, basically. He's like, um, fine, we'll just be here. We'll just be here every month. Ed in the chat said, will and Taylor have to share the results of the survey with the prosecution? The results will be shared in their motion for change of venue because that is the purpose of the survey. So yes. Um, and Brandy asked the same thing. Do you think this was planned to force a venue change? They are trying to gather information to argue for a venue change, but I don't think they are trying to make the survey force the venue change. Those, some of those questions make me wonder if this is how this company always surveys in every high profile case. And, uh, I have like a lot more questions. Maggie said she admitted that there was a time crunch on Friday. She could have called the courthouse and said something like, Hey, I see this. I'm working on a response. She sent a response saying a more thorough response will be forthcoming. Um, she did, she did do that. Katie B says, I live in late Tom. Most people are waiting for answers. I would imagine so. And because you want answers. Tracy said we passed audacity to flagrant. Yep. Um, Sandy, who's been a member for 20 months, says this has been wild. Thanks for streaming. You're welcome. I'm fascinated. K Rob said, Judge usually travels to new venue too, generally. Um, but that can vary by jurisdiction, but generally. Sarah said, Is there any point where Ann Taylor could be removed from the case or sanctioned? Not, not, not for any of this. Um, Ann Taylor is doing her job. I I don't love the questions that were asked, but Ann Taylor is doing her job of zealous advocacy for this defendant, and she is leaving no stern, stone unturned. So though the court takes issue with what happened, there's remedies for that. The remedies is push the motion out. The remedy is denying the motion. So there are there are processes and remedies, but no, Ann Taylor hasn't done anything that is is wrong. The prosecution disagrees with how she did it. The court might overrule it, but that doesn't mean that she is violated anything and the court did not find that at this point. Casey Cat said she looked at YouTube because this is in news feeds around the world daily. Has she looked at YouTube? Um they're just pulling from local news feeds, she said. Lacey said so if she got a change of venue, would that mean a new judge? No. Uh generally judge judge would go with it unless there is a reason that he cannot or that that jurisdiction does not. Lindsay said, so her argument is that less than 1% of the population, so no harm, no foul, because it's not statistically significant potential harm, but somehow statistically significant enough to prove that there's too much bias. Yes. 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 Law and Lumber, I appreciate the marriage advice. <laughs> not marriage advice. Don't give commentary while your spouse is cooking your food. <laughs> I am not married to Corey Richens. <laughs> My husband makes a really good Moscow meal. No, I normally make the drinks. He makes the food. However, now our teen is also helping make the food, and that's been um, delightful. Absolutely delightful. Could giving information to other counties um, today hurt them? They can't do that. K and J travel. The surveys have to pause until they re they figure out what they're going to do. So that is that is not happening um, at all. So, question. So, what is Ann Taylor saying? Better to ask forgiveness than for permission from the judge. She's saying, I don't, I didn't, she's saying there's no rule that says I have to ask for permission. I don't have to run these things by you. This is an acceptable practice. We're allowed to survey. And the prosecution's like, but these questions in this case, in this circumstances are sus. Mm -hmm. Diane says, why isn't the judge asking about the specific questions that are harmful or out of line? 
because the judge was getting to the heart of all the things and is now having another hearing next week to talk about that. We had a hearing to figure out that we needed another hearing. It's like a meeting that begets more meetings. It's like, okay, this meeting was great. We need to set up three more meetings to cover this, 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 and this. That is what happened in court today. Um, cat in a hat. No, I do factor for lunch and enjoy them, but we do green chef at night and the kiddo helps cook the green chef meals at night. Um, the problem, the biggest problem I have with the factor meals, I love them being a sponsor is that my husband takes them to work so rapidly that I don't always have any left. So I, yes, I need to order more, <laughs> but that, um, K Rob said, I would bet she never saw the question. She knew exactly how the questions would be formatted, semantics, shading the truth, force of venue change. We'll definitely see what happens. I was there, but I didn't do it. Carla said, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't me. She's like taking Shaggy. She's like, your honor. I, I, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. The most defense answer ever. It's like, it wasn't me. Those weren't my pants. Those aren't my questions. Oh, Bumblebee said question. If there hadn't been a non-dissemination order in the case, would there have been recourse for the prosecution to stop those questions? I don't know what method they would have argued it under because they didn't include any of those arguments in Idaho. So I would have to uh, look at what Andrea Burkhardt has to say. She practices in that area um, and I do not. So I would have to look. I don't, I don't know. Um, but I'm curious the same way that you're curious. I get why lawyers are spicy when they get to trial because there's history there, right? It's the, I mean, it's the same reason that Katie's still spicy with Schwartzy. It's there's history there and you can't just turn away from that history and not be spicy, even if they're trying to be like cute about it. It's like, but that your, your attitude here is like literally the fucking point shorts. That's the whole point. And so you can see her being like, but that's the whole point. Noni Ann said they ask the questions when the public is aware. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Hunter said, does she not see how she and her team slash experts are prejudicing their client? IMO, in my opinion, she wants to change. She wanted to be um, ignorant of the questions so she gets her change of venue. We'll see what happens. I mean, she definitely wants a change of venue. Uh, that is that is the goal. Uh, Bella Bratt for you said, am I the only one that thinks it's refreshing to see a defense attorney actually fighting for their client after Hannah G? I love the, eye, the elbow throwing. Comple again, completely fair. Everyone deserves a zealous defense. And sometimes we are going to look at the zealous defense and be like, ma'am. I mean, there's other, uh, other cases have raised, not other cases I've covered, but other cases have raised my eyebrows more. Octo, it's good to see you 40 months. Where are my 30 plus month subscribers at? Lawnard OGs. Octo in the chat. Good to see you, friend. Um, thank you for the gifted membership. We're here, Octo Nation, almost at the three-year mark. You guys are such an incredible community. I have um, I did a podcast interview yesterday that I can't wait to share with you, um, where I talked a lot about how incredible this community is. This whole case, the whole case is in the survey questions. It it feels like that, or at least where the fights are gonna be. Casey Cat said, I don't believe for one second Ann Taylor didn't know the questions. She's a control freak. I mean, she is lead counsel. No credible company would ask those questions on their own. Um, we, we will see, we will see. Tracy said, is the strategy to get it moved? That is what they want to do. They want to move venue. Trini 10 said, is it normal to share so much information with the people created the survey? And Taylor says in the hearing that she did not share any information with the people creating the survey. She, the, the survey was hired the company was hired and then they pulled the questions from their survey of the media. So she said she did not share anything with them, which seems like the appropriate way to go about it. Uh, Goose Toots said, um, uh Oh, love you. EDB. Thank you for what you do. Yikes to the survey. Thank you. I love what I do. I love what I do. I love getting to be here with y'all. Teddy says, absolutely agree that this violates the order. It's just, quote, did you hear this evidence? Yes or no. That was a lot of it. A little Nikki said, it feels like the defense did this to dirty the jury pool or force a change of venue. Slimy move, in my opinion, in the com 
if the community members didn't know those facts of the case they do now. And there's no context for it, right? I mean, when you see headlines and read an article, it can be like, some are speculating X, Y, Z. That gives you context for like, oh, that might not be like a fact-based information versus did you hear this? It's just different. My kid's personal Uber driver asked in the chat. Wait, where did it go? I was just trying to grab it. Question off topic. I mean, I, I kind of made it the topic when I started talking about Vanderpump rules. <laughs> did you ever watch the Vile Files podcast? He has a lot of EPR interviews. His interview with Schwartz and Sanderville was interesting. I had watched commentary on the interview and then I had to go watch the entire one myself. It, it was, uh, Sandoval's gonna Sandoval. Mm -hmm. Jen said, have you heard this thing? Well, now I have, sir. <laughs> yes. Question. Could this be viewed as a way to throw out evidence at trial? No, this is, this is a move to change venue. This is not going to change that. Emily, isn't it questionable that the defense didn't even review the questions? It's interesting to me, but I wonder what the thought process is behind that. So I'm going to wait to see what the expert says next week. Um, Pam says, love your reacts. You make stressful fuckery less fuckery-ish. <laughs> I, um, I, I, look, I love a good court hearing. Today, today was undeniably an interesting court hearing, right? <laughs> Get it, spicy Santa. Yellow pill. That's hilarious. Um, Jenny said, maybe the prosecution didn't write the questions, but it's their, still their responsibility. The defense, and it is, and she took responsibility for that. The real deal said, can the defense be sanctioned by JJ for tainting the jury pool? No, and nobody's asking for that. They're asking for those jurors to not be allowed and to try to, to try to um, kind of cordon off the harm, to try to just like, cut the harm out. It's like, okay, well this, these jurors aren't going to be in the jury pool. So art by Julie E said, could this cause a mistrial? We are so far away from that, but no, it's not going to cause a, um, a mistrial. We're not even, we're over a year away from any trial. There is it a quirk to pretrial? Yes. But are there remedies? Yes. Is this something that's unfixable? No. Is it frustrating to see? Yes. Is this why I like covering some cases from their inception to see all of the ins and outs. Cause by the time this gets to trial, we're going to be like, Oh my God, remember when this happened where, when we pick up trials as they go to trial, it's going to be a little different because that background isn't there. So we can sit as juries and be like, okay, tell me, tell me, tell me what happened in this case here. We're like, well, we're learning as we go. So it's a different experience. And that is why I choose to cover some cases from the beginning and some cases we pick up as they're going to trial because it's nice, I think, to not only expand our own capacities of processing information and, and thinking critically about both sides, but also practicing in, in a world where we like, it, our world pushes us to jump to more rapid conclusions. It's really interesting to go in with very little information and then try to wait to make a conclusion. I think it's a very valid and interesting exercise of like, I have a question about that. I have a question about this. Let's see how y'all tie it together. I'm very curious. And that is something that is, um, we are not afforded the intellectual opportunity to do that very often. Um, because we live in a society, um, that really pushes rapid decision-making. We're not often able to say, no, I need more time to think about that. I need more time to process that. I'm not, I don't have an answer. I don't have a response. I don't have a, a comment. I need to think about it. And we don't live in a world often where we can push back because we are pushed to that faster response. I like being able to push back and say, let's, let's, let's process this a little bit more. And I think pushing back on that is helpful. I also think we need to get back to a place where rapid response is not required because I don't think humans come to their best results when we move too rapidly. Sometimes rapid action has to happen, but when we're being asked to, to respond or to um, decide, our brains need more time to process information that's coming in, especially around things that are difficult 
So I think that going into some cases that way is, is really helpful. And I enjoy doing it for me to make sure that I am also able to keep those skills strong. Cause those are, those are skills that need to be, need to be practiced just like everything else. Um, Jennifer said, do you think the defense did this deliberately? I mean, they definitely wanted to, uh, they knew the survey was deliberate. I don't know about the the rest of it. Yellow pill said, I have to represent my client equals what if anything. Um, Hunter wants to know, Miss Taylor, are you aware of the toxic gossip train? <laughs> Miss Taylor, all aboard. <laughs> Where the toxic gossip train has left the station on those survey questions. Um, Shanik Floyd, thank you so much for the five gifted memberships. Rob, thank you for the five gifted memberships. I appreciate you. Um, Emily, how are the court, will you find out the people who participated? The court's going to have to ask the defense for that information. And the defense is going to have to probably get it from the survey company directly to the court without it passing through the hands of the prosecution and the defense. So probably that I would imagine that's how the judge will do it. Sherry said 30 months here. Good to see you. Will you be covering the love is blind lawsuits? I've heard of them. They are on my, my list, but we've got like, Oh, that list is, um, that list is growing and, um, trial is like, I feel, I feel the read trial breathing down my neck. Like it is, it is like literally choo-choo. It is coming. It is coming. I'm, I, this is also on my list that Hermes, uh, Birkin is also on my list. So, and, and we do have a bunch of Bravo cases to get to. It's like, it's a, we have a lot to get through before that starts. Uh, doc TJB said, I specialize in central auditory processing disorders in my books and articles. I really try to stress the need for processing time. And I doc TJB, it's such important work. And I don't think we all understand how our brains work. I am still trying to figure out the quirks of, of how my brain works. I think it's why it's so important to talk about neurodivergence and all of its flavors, because I only recognize some of the things through other people explaining their things. And I was like, wait, there's a name for that? Because how do we know it's, how do we know what it is without having the conversation? And so um, I think it's really important to talk about. I also think it's important to push back where we can and say, I am not going to just respond immediately. I need a minute. And for that not to be a negative thing. And right now it feels like in a very fast moving, um, in a very fast moving space that people are expected to have not just rapid responses, but like rapid responses and the proper take without any time to actually think about things. And I don't know how we, um, I don't know how we, we get there. Like, how can you really process all the sides of a thing without, um, having a minute? So I will always push back on having a minute. It's why I don't cover breaking news. And it's why when breaking news happens, I, I remind the chat, like, I don't cover breaking news. Some really serious shit has gone down while we've been streaming. Um, but I can't provide helpful commentary on breaking news when I don't know what we're getting into. And when information is not being vetted, it's just like a fire hose of information. I can't process that well, so I can't help you process it because it's it's too rapid, which is why I don't do breaking news. When we get to look at lawsuits, there's times to process the lawsuits. And there's times I've said, I'm not covering this yet because I need time. I need more time to cover it. And um, I will always be upfront with you guys about it, but it's why I say I need time and I don't cover breaking news. If it's breaking news on something we've already covered, it's slightly different for me. Like if it's, um, you know, a case that we've covered and Murdoch's getting sentenced to this many years. Well, we have all the information leading up to that thing happening. So it doesn't feel um, like it's a developing situation. It's just a, the next thing that happened in a case. Developing situations are very hard to process in real time. 
Um, and I think that's why it pulls us in to the news cycle so much, but we've, we've had a lot of breaking news happen while streaming and the mods, um, always do such an incredible job of just reminding the community and the community is incredible for this too, reminding the community, like, Hey, we don't, we don't cover breaking news. And if we're in the middle of trial, my brain can't switch gears to, to offer anything of value. And I, I don't think it's valuable for me to be like, whoa, some shit happened. That's some shit. Like, that's not just, that's just not helpful. And also, um, when there is breaking news, we often don't have all of the facts and the information. And when we don't have all of the facts and the information, it is harder to process because we don't know all of the facts and information. So I prefer to wait. I, I don't, Emily, it's not time to rant about like the 24 hour news cycle. And if that is, is a uh, diminished fact based reporting of information, because it, uh, I, it, it starts getting into a lot of speculation because there's nothing else to fill the air. And I don't like that either. And I, I most recently was really um, frustrated watching it with the, um, the search for Riley strain and try, uh, trying to figure out what had happened uh, strained, sorry. And figuring out what had happened to him here in Nashville. And people were just filling space with rampant speculation, not everybody, but some, and it was very hard to watch. I'm like, what is the basis for that? Like, what are the facts beyond that? What is the, the underlying fact of that? And it was just how awful must that be for the family? How awful that is that for people who are watching it happen and are concerned that everything is just, it could be this, it could be that, but what about this? Oh my God, this thing, it could be this thing. And aren't we mad about this thing that it could be that there's no evidence that it might be? <gasps> Fucking miss me. I can't. Uh, yeah, with the Princess Kate stuff, too. Like. <sighs> so that is why I don't cover breaking news in a nutshell. I don't know how we got there. Probably through the power of ADHD. Uh, it transported us to a completely different topic. <laughs> we. <laughs> the magic of ADHD. We have we have teletransported. We have we have slipped through the rabbit hole. We have. Uh, completely jumped topics and had a, a really lovely discussion about processing times and speeds. The other, the other bitch of ADHD is there is times when I'm like, I need more time to process. And then there's times when I'm talking to people, I'm like, I need you to talk faster. <laughs> like, like now you're slowing me down. <laughs> this is screaming goat stuff. Today was definitely screaming goat stuff. Um, I think I know that Runkle has this pigeon business, but I think when we talk about gossip, um, other than throwing it back to Meredith, Meredith Marks with the rumors, the innuendo, the gossip, instead of throwing it just back to Meredith Marks, I think we also, it's going to be the piggly wiggly business. Like that's the piggly wiggly business, right? It's the stuff you gossip about at the grocery store with uh, those in your community that you run into and you're like, oh my God, did you hear this? Um, I, Rob said, Emily, that's why properly moderated chats are so important. Families are watching trial streams and don't need the garbage in the chat. I love this community in mind. Rob, I, I 100% agree with you. Um, when, Particularly when we look at trials and cases, um, there are those that are connected to this that want to know what's happening without seeing a witness on the stand be disparaged. I had a witness from the Depp case reach out and was like, um, thank you for just talking about what I was talking about and not talking about like me. Um, and so many of the other chats on the, um, internet are fucking vile with people talking about the person's face, the person's voice, the person's this, the person's that, and then trying to find them around the internet. It's, it's just, uh, stuff that wouldn't happen if you were just sitting in live court. And it also is not, the way that we do things. I want to evaluate the content of what somebody's saying and their face is not up for commentary unless they are making faces like at the prosecutor, like, Ooh, can you see that they're upset? But we're not talking about 
them. We're not attacking their attributes. Emily, wouldn't these questions affect more than the 400 people questioned? That's what Judge Judge was saying. Um, thank you so much for the gifted memberships, Shanik. I hope I'm pronouncing your name pro properly. And if I am not, I am deeply sorry. And please let me know. Daydream said, love is blind lawsuits. Please take a number and Emily will get to you when your number is called. We will get there. I promise. I promise. Um, with that chat, I have got to go, um, get a kiddo from practice and see my other kiddo from, uh, who's home from school. Madison, thank you so much. I love this community too. It's really, really just an incredible community. Thank you mods for the late night ride. And to my, um, my producer Miguelina, thank you so much. Um, Destiny said, I love how similar our neuro spiciness is. It's just nice when other people say something and you're like, that's me too. We learn through talking to each other. We learn through having conversation and asking questions and being open to other people's experiences and hearing them. That is how humans, I think, learn well. And that is what I think we do so well here. And I appreciate you for making it the best place on the internet to do that because Lonards are bay. All right. Lonards, what's today? Are we at Thursday? We're at Thursday. Um, next week, we're going to cover Scientology on the podcast. I will be back on Tuesday to stream. Make sure you have the Lonard app. Um, I will say you guys had a very big response to the, uh, the Diddy lawsuit. So like, we're going to just, I think we're just keeping an eye to see if an indictment happens and when we're just like, <laughs> when, when is that going to happen? What, what, what's going on there? Is there a grand jury? I want to know. And with all of that, Lonards, cheers. Have a good night. You can stay up to date with everything I'm covering and fast notifications on our free iOS and Android app at lawnerdapp.com or search the app store for Lawnerd. You can also follow me around social media and don't forget to check out my podcast, The Emily Show, with quick bits dropping every Monday, summarizing everything I do here on the live streams on Tuesday and Thursday for when you just have time for the quick bits. Thanks for being a Lawnerd.